All right, good morning, everyone. This is a regular meeting of members of the State Liquor Authority. Today is December 5th, 2018. Present today are Chairman Bradley, Commissioner Fan, General Counsel Riano, Deputy Commissioner of Licensing Held, and myself, Secretary Donahue. Excuse me. The next meetings of the authority will be December 11th, and that's just for one item. So don't ask to have your items put on that calendar. Uh, December 19th, then we have a three-week break until January 9th and then January 23rd. We're gonna call items in the most part in the, in the order they were signed in. First in New York, I mean first in Buffalo, then Albany, and then New York. We do have some items that are gonna be addressed first, however. Uh, Chairman, do you have anything else to Yeah, add? just so no one wonders, uh, Commissioner Ford is not feeling well today, so it will just be myself and Commissioner Fan. Do you wanna say anything about the website? All oh, right, and for those of you that are regulars here um the, the sla just went online with their new website monday tuesday tuesday um it is a work in progress so we are taking suggestions I, we've already gotten some negative feedback as well as a lot of positive feedback i think it's definitely an upgrade from what we did have there's a lot of updated information on there and new information that has not been in there in the past and as I said, it is a work in progress, so there will be additions. So if there's information that you would like to see, if you're regular users of the website and you don't see it there, or you think that it should be easier to find, uh, please send us an email, and we will take those into consideration. Thank you. All right, so as your items are called, please approach the podium. Introduce yourself. Please speak into the microphone, because that's how we're recording everything that happens. All right, we're going to start first in New York City with a request by Council's Office in item 2469A, Eden Ballroom, LLC, to request for an emergency summary order of suspension. Mr. Buckley. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Commissioner Fan. Robert Fine. Buckley for our Council's Office, Zone 1. And as Secretary Donahue has mentioned, this is a this is for consideration of an emergency order summary suspension for the matter of Eden Ballroom LLC. Uh, the trade name that we have is Space Abiza New York, but our investigations and police reports indicate that's no longer the a trade name being used. So uh, perhaps for convenience, I'm going to be using the, uh, the trade name FREQ, which I believe is pronounced Freak for this location. So it's a trade name that apparently has been now been in use for quite some time. Um, as you can see, the premises is a relatively large nightclub. I'm not even sure if there's too many nightclubs of this size still in existence. Uh, something that's from uh, maybe 10 years ago when these clubs are more pre prevalent, but this again is on the west side. It's in a sort of a remote industrial area. Um, in the, um, there's one principal, uh, obviously many employees, but the principal, Mr. Piaquadio, said he would manage the location on his own. Uh, in the last two years or so, the premises uh, was approved for method operation to have, quote, occasional topless dancing. Uh, that being said, the, the catalytic incident that would cause this matter to be submitted to the members was a stabbing of a security guard that occurred um, in, I believe it was November 23rd. Uh, that incident is sort of fits the pattern of other incidents at this location where the security guard uh, apparently lied to the police that he was stabbed elsewhere because he's not a licensed security guard, uh, that it happened at a, an earlier time, but through police investigation, it appears that this person, Mr. Reinford, uh, was working at the location as a security guard, uh, even though the security firm for the location denied he was working, said he was a fire guard, um, and he was you know, taken to the hospital in, in Brooklyn. It wasn't a, a serious injury, but nonetheless, we have an incident occurring of violence at a security guard, apparently something regarding a patron, not really clear what, what the uh, underlying facts are, and the licensee or its representatives not being cooperative with the police. As well, there was a prior incident 
in August of 2018, I believe it was August 20th, where apparently there was some sort of altercation. Uh, a patron apparently in removing a, taking a gun out of his pants, uh, accidentally apparently discharged the gun into his own thigh. Uh, when, this is some of the material here I haven't been able to provide to the members because this was only given to uh, us just just in the last day or two. But we have a sergeant who responds to the scene of, of gun, gunshots fired. Um, when he went to the location, he sees blood, he sees broken glass on the floor. But the um, security guard that he, or security chief that he met with said, no, there was no gunshot. There was just broken glass. They see a video which has no audio. And it appears that people are in the location. And all of a sudden, people just are scrambling or, or running, which would indicate there was some sort of shooting. In fact, and again, the security chief said there was no shooting. But in fact, someone was found at a hospital with a gunshot wound. And through a police investigation, that person was arrested for a chrome possession of, uh, of a firearm, and again, for shooting himself with a, with a gun. Um, this seems to be a, a pattern to, at this premises, according to the police, where they failed to report incidents of violence at the location. When incidents are found out by the police, there's non-cooperation from the location. They either deny it happened, or they apparently drag their feet in providing a <laughs> video to the police department. Um, and as well as there seems to be just a disorganization. Now, to further things, that apparently in the meantime, instead of having just occasional topless dancing, they've now divided themselves into two, in essence, separate businesses, one called Freak, F-R-E-Q, another called Veil, V-E-I-L, which apparently is some sort of quote, members only, gentlemen's club, our investigators, I don't think it really determined what it means by members only, but now they appear, they appear to be running a strip club, lap dancing, et cetera, uh, at a location other than what was initially um, designated in the change in method of operation. Which is the strip club? Which is the strip club? That would be called Veil. Vale. And that's the private members only, or? There's a sign, actually, that says there's a separate entrance, which says Veil, members only. And that's the strip club? Correct. And the other part, Freak, Freak is, is sort of upstairs. Like, it's okay. a dance club, right? Um, that apparently wasn't, you know, like, and there's topless dancing is, is legal, so that was approved. So, but there was no, again, and then the indication was going to be, quote, occasional. But here the premises has apparently, you know, radically changed its method of operation. Uh, and they're, they're separated, meaning you can't get in one and then walk into the other? I believe our investigators determined that they're, in essence, running as separate locations with separate managers. Whether, um, I believe you can still, in, I guess, internally get inside, go from one floor to the, to the next, and also there's a rooftop. But there is, in essence, uh, uh, perhaps uh, there is, uh, you know, there, yes, there seems to be bifurcated into these two clubs. All right, can you focus on the availing part of this as well? Yes. So in some of the, when I was just, a, so I often do this, I search on e-courts for um, any matters regarding uh, perhaps um, personal injury litigation against a premises. What I did find out is I found that um, an entity sued Mr. P. Aquadio and other persons because apparently this um, seems to be a contracting company, invested money and monies involving in contracting into this location apparently several years ago. And the allegation was that Mr. P. Aquadio and a management group uh, wasted the money. Didn't, apparently they didn't get a return on the investment. And in the e-courts documents that I saw, in fact, uh, the defendants, the respondents, did admit that there was this hospitality group that of other persons who, in fact, had an interest in the business as well as this this contracting company. Again, this was never disclosed. Obviously, again, the only sole principal is Mr. Piaquadio. Um, so, just to make this clear, the, the clearer the the contracting company invested money in one of the print in one of the LLCs that is the owner of both of, of this location, 
and never disclosed that to the SLA. Right. The, when the application was submitted, it was only Mr. C Mr. Piaquadio okay. as the sole principal. And in fact, some of these other persons in the hospitality group, uh, I believe it's Mr. Jennington um, and Mr. Seneca, Carlos Seneca, I believe were um, partners in a, in a life, I believe the same, I believe it was also called Space of Bees, but I think that was sort of in, in Chelsea, I think it was another, a prior licensee. So these, yeah, you know, Mr. Piaquadio, you know, had prior experience with these, these individuals. And it just goes towards, again, the, the police telling the, uh, the authority that when they go to the location, the, the owner of Mr. Piaquadio is never mentioned, there's sort of some sort of, uh, Disorganization as to who's actually running the location. There is a main manager, her name is Tracy Choi, who runs the freak location, who was described by the police as being cooperative to some extent, but then there's a police liaison who apparently is not cooperative, who who drags his feet in providing video or, and it's good, for example, in this recent incident with a security guard, quote, got stabbed. Still, apparently, to date, the video has not been produced by the police. Even how, how often present. are the police required to be there? Um, the lieutenant has told us that it's a problematic location. It's now really a focus for visibility of patrols, for directed patrols. Um, the crime statistics have more or less stayed static in, in 2017, 2018. Uh, to be honest, not, there doesn't appear to be a, a, a large degree of violent crimes emanating from the location, but it's still it's a location with, a, again, with, a, with the volume of persons coming there, with a 1,300-person capacity. Um, the police do have to pay a lot of attention to this location, and they describe that other locations within the confines of the uh, Midtown North Precinct are cooperative with the police when incidents occur, provide video, have good relationships with security guards and managers, but this location, for whatever reason, has a consistent pattern of not being cooperative with the police, which caused a nuisance abatement proceeding to be brought uh, earlier this year, which they settled, but it appears to be that some of those stipulations that were into are, they are not in compliance with, providing video, keeping records of, of incidents at the location, things like that. Um, so that is, in essence, why the matter is being referred to the authority, that this is a location that just does not appear to be complying with its uh, method of operation. They have no food at the location. Again, our investigators have been there uh, several times in August, October, and November of this year, uh, at different investigators, and it's the same uh, setup, but you have topless dancing, lap dancing, no food. Uh, and, and we, no, it's the premises in essence operating as two separate locations. And again, the, the nuisance abatement described other violent incidents that occur at the location. There's, there's now been one shooting inside the location. There was another shooting outside um, in 2017. Mr. Buckley, um, as far as you know, um, it's the same licensee that's, um, that's been operating these premises, right? Well, as I said, there's Mr. Piaquadio, who the police apparently have never seen, but he's the sole principal. But my findings from the, the litigation indicate that there are other interests in this location. Right, that they are investors of his, but he's still behind the scenes. Yeah, Mr. P Mr. P Piquato appeared for a hearing uh, a few months ago, so he does exist. He, I did actually see him. So our records, the authorities' records, say that he's the sole principal. But okay, um, and it, it appears that you know this licensee just doesn't get it. I mean, it's the same issues over and over again. The police go there, they tell them they have to, you know, cooperate with the police when incidents occur. And it's the same, pretty much the same story. Um, you know, apparently a, a sense you. of disconnect, disorganization, and fair to, to be cooperative with the police. When All right, thank you. you. Ready to vote? Yeah. All yes. Right. Commissioner Fan. Um, based on the most recent incident of the stabbing of the security guard, um, two gun incidents, 
lots of violence, broken eye sockets, bottles overhead. Um, and I um, somewhat disagree that this is a far in, uh, industrial area. I think this area is becoming increasingly residential and therefore there is um, more concern for um, public safety in this area now. Obviously, management is not being cooperative. They are not just co um, not responsive, but they are basically lying to the police, as Mr. Buckley had pointed out. The availing of, um, I guess they're availing themselves, you know, bifurcating into two, bi two businesses, changing trade names, um, changing method of operation without notifi notifying the authority. From my own research, I see that they're doing a New Year's Eve party with five hours of open bar, which is just totally not legal and very unsafe in my opinion. Five hours of nonstop drinking on New Year's Eve um, sounds like disaster waiting to happen. Um, I feel like this licensee is not just irresponsible but probably intentionally disregarding ABC laws and um, the existence of this authority. This is a vocal point and obvious strain on police resource and therefore a threat to public safety, welfare, and health, and I vote to summarily suspend this license. I vote to suspend as well on the same grounds. All right, thank you, Mr. Thank Buckley. You. The next item is also a request for a summary suspension order. It's item 2469B, 3758 East Tremont Restaurant Corp. Mr. Armstrong. Thank you. Stephen Armstrong, appearing on behalf of Council's office, in support of the summary suspension of the premises known as Vapor Lounge, located at 3758 East Tremont Ave in the Bronx. The most recent incident, which led Council's office to recommend summary suspension, was the assault committed by two security guards inside of the licensed premises on November 17th of this year. Uh, what we know about this incident is that on November 17th, approximately 2.55 a.m., a male individual got into an altercation with security guards inside of the premises. Two security guards then escorted this individual to a bathroom where he was then punched, kicked, and beaten with an unknown object, uh, which resulted in injuries to his head, neck, ribs, and arms. Uh, does not appear that anyone at the premises called 911 regarding this particular assault. Police eventually responded to a 911 call for a large fight at the intersection of Randall Avenue and East Tremont Avenue. Uh, it's right outside the, the premises. Um, when police arrived, they found the victim covered in blood and still bleeding from his forehead. And the victim was removed to Jacoby Hospital by EMS. The responding officers were able to get surveillance footage from inside the premises, and this footage shows two security guards escorting the victim to the bathroom. While they're on their way to the bathroom, the footage shows one of the guards punching the victim in the face. Uh, the parties remained in the bathroom for several minutes. Upon exiting, the footage shows that one of the guards had uh, what appeared to be an expandable baton in his hand. And by the time the responding officers arrived at the premises, these two security guards had already left. When the officer asked the manager, Mr. Robert Solis, about their security, Mr. Solis showed him a binder containing information about their security guards. However, there was nothing in this binder uh, on the two security guards who committed the assault. Mr. Solis uh, also claimed to only know these guards by their nicknames and could not provide names, addresses, or contact information for either of them. He acknowledged they were guards, though? Yes, he did. And uh, as bad as this particular incident was, it's especially troubling given the recent history at the premises. On May 16th, 2018, licensees submitted a no-contest plea for case number 123784, which the SLA charged. Uh, in addition, several charges for failure to conform, failure to comply, uh, also for becoming a focal point for police attention, the licensee failing to, ex failing to exercise adequate supervision over the premises and for suffering or permitting violent incidents to occur at the premises on January 12th and March 7th of 2018. Uh, and it's this January 12th incident I want to emphasize. The, on January 12th, a female victim was slashed in the face with a sharp object by a male perpetrator. And rather than call 911 immediately, the manager at the location uh, permitted several security guards to assault this male perpetrator who suffered a broken eye socket as a result of the assault, had to be removed uh, to Jacoby Hospital by EMS. Uh, when facing these charges, <coughs> licensee met with their community board, with the 45th Precinct, and with State Senator Klein and Assemblyman Benedetto, 
among others, and made a number of promises relating to overhauling how the premises would operate. Uh, licensee claimed they would raise the age of admission, change their dress code, and expand their food menu uh, to try and attract a different clientele. Licensee also stated they would hire a new security guard company and implement new security policies to avoid a repeat of the January 12th incident. Uh, at the time, the 45th Precinct expressed skepticism that there would be meaningful changes made at the location. As did I, <laughs> and if I remember correctly. Yes, you did. Uh, Community Board 10 opposed licensees' uh, proposed method of operation change in June, though they noted that they would be open to supporting it if licensee followed through on their commitments. I believe Senator Klein and Assemblyman Benedetto both submitted letters to the board in support of licensee. And uh, unfortunately, it appears licensee has not followed through on these promises. And it, it's not only this most recent incident on November 17th that indicates that, that indicates licensee has not made the necessary changes. Uh, according to the 114th Precinct, there have been 69 directed patrols at the premises since the licensee appeared at the full board meeting on July 25th and made promises to the board. And that includes more than 50 directed patrols since September 1st. And based both on this November 17th incident and the continued strain on police resources that the premises has had, uh, it's clear that this establishment remains a danger to the public health, safety, and welfare. And it's because of this, we recommend the license be summarily suspended pursuant to Section 413 of SAFA. Thank you. Any questions? No. Nope. Ready to vote? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Fan. Uh, it's very disappointing um, that this location has developed to this stage. Um, I don't think not a lot needs to be said when security guards are beating up patrons to um, close to you know to a point of close to death. Well, I think um, it's um, it's time to take away the optimism and opportunities that we try to offer licensees, and therefore. Uh, because of the th threat to public safety, health, and welfare, I vote to summarily suspend. Chairman Bradley? Yeah, I was ready to cancel this license in July, and because they had the support of their local electeds and their change of business, or alleged change of business practices, I didn't cancel it. Um, and it's obvious that all they did was come in here and give us a bunch of malarkey about what they were going to do, and it's the same thing going on. So I, it's clear they were a public nuisance then, and they are now, so I vote to summarily suspend. All right, then. All right, the next item also here in New York is also a request for a summary order of suspension. It's item 2469C, Manhattan River Group, LLC. Ms. Marcico. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Council's office is requesting that the members issue a summary order of suspen suspension as to Manhattan River Group, also known as La Marina, um, for several reasons. You here for this? Okay. The, um, the first reason is because one, uh, their bar manager was recently arrested for engaging in the felony sale of cocaine and oxycodone inside La Marina on repeated instances between July and November of this year. Uh, the second reason is we are concerned for the public safety as there continues to be existing Department of Buildings fire code violations at the premises which have not been addressed. And the third reason is because the licensee has shown a, a complete disregard for SLA rules and other laws and has committed a laundry list of, of violations uh, involving local rules and SLA laws. We were informed by the 34th Precinct last week that there was a takedown arrest of Christian Mendez, the manager, on November 20th of this year. An undercover narcotics uh, detective met with Christian Mendez, the bar manager, on July 27th at about 8.20 p.m., at which time Mr. Mendez handed the detective five clear plastic bags containing a white powdery substance which has tested to be positive for cocaine in exchange for U.S. currency. Now, as a matter of background, while this is going on, I myself was busy issuing a notice of pleading as to the licensee, which they received on August 3rd of 2018, 
for about 70 violations, mostly dealing with fire safety code and other violations. Now, the licensee would have received this notice of pleading, I think, on August 5th, 6th, 7th, somewhere around this, this time. So by way of background, they have this notice of pleading pending, which I'll get into, and they have two other older notices of pleadings pending. So at this point, the licensee is on notice that their license is in serious jeopardy. So while their license is in serious jeopardy, the bartender was selling to this undercover narcotics detective. Manager or bartender? Oh, I'm sorry, the bar manager. Um, and this is per their information. They provided us a list of other employees. They identified Mr. Mendez as the bar manager, and they identified another individual as a manager. So on this list of approximately 30 employees that they provided to us, Mr. Mendez was listed as, as the person as the second highest level of authority on the list of employees. Um, so on August 7th, 7th of 2018, at about 9.20 p.m., Mr. Mendez sold the undercover narcotics detective one large Ziploc style bag containing cocaine. On August 16, 2018, at 6.40 p.m., he sold the, undercover, the same undercover narcotics detective five clear Ziploc style bags containing cocaine. On August, he was very busy because on August 24, 2018, he again sold to the same detective five clear Ziploc bags containing cocaine. On August 34th, at 9.20 p.m., Mr. Mendez sold the same detective one Ziploc style bag containing marijuana, as well as one Ziploc style bag containing cocaine. So he, 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 he has a variety of drugs he, he was selling. On September 7, 2018, Mr. Mendez, at 9.35 p.m., he sold the same detective a clear plastic bag containing 20 pills. So this time he sold oxycodone to the undercover detective. Um, on October 5th, 2018, at about 5.30 p.m., so this was months after this notice of pleading had been pending, um, this manager sold to the undercover detective one latex glove containing a white powdery substance weighing more than 14 grams um, in exchange for U.S. currency. So here we have the manager actually increasing the weight of cocaine. I believe the sale was worth approximately $600, if my memory serves correct. So um, it appears he's, he's getting more and more confidence with this detective and is engage, engaging in higher weight sales. On November 20th, 2018, that's when the takedown occurred. A Detective Greenwood arrested Mr. Mendez at the premise, or actually in front of La Marina. And incident to um, the lawful arrest, the detective recovered 32 uh, MDMA pills and one Ziploc bag containing a Greek leaf leafy substance believed to be marijuana, as well as some um, U.S. currency. Um, in addition to this, uh, we have other issues, and, and I'd like to just get to the background to explain a little bit of the timeline. Um, the police re received reports on July 7th of 2018, uh, you know, over the summer, that there were six patrons, they were getting 911 calls stating that there were intoxicated people passed out at needing ambulances at La Marina. The police responded and observed numerous persons heavily intoxicated, unconscious, and unresponsive, and or vomiting. All the aided patrons had attended uh, an event at the licensed premise where the paint or a colored powder was used to paint patrons as they listened to music on the beach. <coughs> Um, a police officer was present there, um, and he was issuing summonses um, in his car uh, directly in front of La Marina when an intoxicated patron from La Marina struck the officer's car, injuring the officer. Now, we know, because a lot of times defense attorneys ask, uh, ask us, how do you know this person was a patron of, of the premise? Well, we know that this man was a patron of the premise because he actually had the same paint colored powder on him that the six vomiting passed out people had. So we know he attended the same, the same event. And um, this patron appeared highly intoxicated and he ran um, away from his car and he was eventually apprehended. So this was a genesis of a follow-up inspection which occurred, this, this very disturbing incident. Um, was a genesis for the follow-up ins inspection that occurred by the uh, SLA and the police and various other agencies on July 13th of 2018, where I think it was the first time, and I'm, I may not be correct on this, but I believe it was the first time that the SLA actually did a full inspection of La Marina, at, at least within recent times. 
Um, it was uh, investigator Charles Trevally did the inspection. And um, oh, was this just us or was this a march operation? Um, it was a joint inspection where the health department was present, um, the SLA, and the police department. Um, so, and, you know, I'd have to look at the paperwork. It, it may be that Department of Buildings was there as well. I believe the Department of Buildings was there as well as, as well as the fire department. So we did this <coughs> inspection with all these agencies and 70 violations were, were discovered. Um, and you know, they're self-explanatory. You see them among them. Um, there was uh, pre-mixed alcohol. There was 100 bottles of pre-mixed alcohol containing rum, vodka, gin, Hennessy, and schnapps on, on shelves. Um, purchased from an authorized source. And they found a very disturbing violation, which is extension cords used for permanent wiring. I know we often see this violation, but I'll explain later why this is disturbing that they found this violation, that the extension cords were used for permanent wiring. Um, there were fireworks um, in the office. The licensee failed to maintain emergency lights, defective fire equipment, uh, failure to maintain fire extinguisher tags, no flame proofing affidavit. There was a, a broken junction box. Um, they failed to present a public assembly plan to the investigators. Um, they failed to display pregnancy warning signs. Um, they found that three bars had been moved um, to other locations that were not depicted in the diagram submitted to the SLA. There was no proprietary guard license, um, obstructed fire extinguisher. There was untaxed tobacco in a hookah cage, which they, ref they were um, refused to provide access to the hookah cage. Um, illegally stored gasoline on the premise. Waste accumulation on the second floor staircase. No emergency lighting activation records. Um, two egress doors are padlocked. Now, an interesting violation that um, our Enforcement Bureau discovered was that the licensee has actually built a second floor to um, the licensed premise. And if you know, um, in the memo, I, I describe what the licensee said they were going to have as, as a premise. They said they were going to have one a single f a floor of all the complex of buildings in La Marina. They've actually built a second floor which apparently is used by the public. This is where one of the second floors is like a conference room where they make presentations to people wishing to have private parties there. And this is completely unapproved by the SLA. We have absolutely no knowledge that they built a second floor onto this complex. Um, there was no- That was for customers? Um, yes, it's used for, cu it's used for customers when they're trying to sell an event. Like if they're having a private event, they actually bring the customers to this conference room, yes. Oh, so it wasn't open to the public, per se? No, my information is it's not open to the public, per se. No, it's okay. offices, which are used as conference rooms. I, okay. You know, with, with people looking to book an event. Um, the, um, so the, uh, they also discovered that the licensee was operating an illegal valet service, so they would charge people to park cars um, where parking was prohibited where it was illegal to park there. Um, and the licensee was keeping the profits from that. They failed to keep books and records, no prohibit, no prohibit warning sales sign, no workman's compensation sign, no certificate of authority. Um, in addition to that, they found some really egregious, disgusting Department of Health code violations. Um, they found that chicken was being stored on ice cubes. The food was being stored at below 41 degrees. Now, I would note that this was not the first time that the licensee had been issued these violations. Um, it recently came to my attention that just the month before, the licensee had been issued the identical violations for keeping, not properly storing food, having fresh mice uh, droppings near the kitchen, et cetera. So this was a repeat violation. So they found the, the mice excreta near the kitchen. There was uh, the dis this fire and ice dispensing equipment was improperly stored. There was um, conditions conducive to the existence of pests because there were holes in the wall. The flooring was improperly maintained, resulting in water accumulation. And they even found that there was liquid, liquid waste that was not being carried to the sewer or sewer, uh, sewage disposal system. Um, so this is you know, what was discovered days after these six people became violently ill. We don't know why they became violently ill. We don't know if it was a food. 
if they bought some bad drugs at the premise, if they were over intoxicated, we don't know, but this is what we found within a week of, of, the, of, the, um, of the incident involving the six patrons. Um, so in a letter to the uh, New York City Department of Parks, the licensee represented, it had corrected all of these violations and I provided us a copy of that letter. They acknowledged the violations and had indicated that they corrected them. Um, unfortunately, as you see in my memo, they have not corrected them. Um, when they applied for this license, they advised us that they were going to ob obtain a certificate of occupancy from the uh, Small Business Administration, uh, ensuring that they were properly occupying the premise. I have seen no evidence that they have ever produced the, certi the certificate of occupancy, um, and they continue to receive violations for failing to have a either a public assembly permit or a certificate of occupancy. They continue to have violations about this um, using extension cords for uh, as permanent wiring. I know that we've seen this violation before, but this one was actually backed up. The, the Department of Buildings, you know, issued some, some, same, the same violation. Um, on August 6th, after the, the, my, my notice of pleading went out, the New York City Department of Building issued a violation for unsafe, unsuitable electrical equipment. And Inspector Wagner issued a violation for unsafe extension cords used for permanent wiring. Well, Ms. Marcico, and I want to, I, I know that we have a lot of things pending, but yeah. I want to focus on health, safety, welfare for the reason that really we're here today is we have an right. individual who's a manager at this premise who's selling significant amounts of controlled substances, including cocaine, oxycodone in the middle of an opioid epidemic. I mean, that's why we're here. That's the health, safety, and welfare that we're really facing at the moment. Is that not correct? Um, yes, it's a primary one, but, um, you know, we have concerns about that in addition to the people getting sick, in addition to the fact that we have no idea how safe these buildings are because we, it, there's, there's no, they haven't conformed to their application. They have not provided us any evidence that they have, they're authorized to be occupying these buildings. But back to Council's point, we wouldn't be here today but for these sales. That's correct. Because um, these, these charges are already out. Yes, Chairman, okay. I, we did not move to suspend uh, based on the prior ones. This is the accumulation of their continuing failure to supervise. And okay, thank you. Uh, you know, we gave them the chance to correct, but they have not corrected since July. Okay, thank and, you. And, um, Council, can I ask you a question? Can I just clarify that there was an incident on July 7, and the patron with the body paint was in the car and struck a police officer on foot? Oh, no, I'm sorry. The, the police officer was sitting inside a car, a police car, and then his car was struck by the patron. Okay, so it was car and car. Exactly. Yes, and the police officer was injured? Yes. Okay, so it was a hard hit? I, I get, yeah, it must have been if he got in. And then he got out of the car and ran away? Yes, the patron did, yes. And then was he apprehended or? Yes, he was. Okay. Thank you. So we're requesting a summary based on all this, and obviously, you know, the first thing I talked about was a drug dealing. Um, okay, thank we're, we're, thanks. We got it. And you're here for who and why? For the licensee. Okay. okay. Can I ask you, can you put your name on the record? Sure. Francis Buscemi, Mailer and Buscemi, 305 Broadway, New York, New York. And with me today is Gerald Tannenbaum, who is a principal of the licensee. And can I ask... Since these are not publicized on our website or any other way, how did you become aware of this? I became aware of it uh, this morning when I was up here. So how, and Mr. Tannenbaum just ran down here from? I'll let Mr. Tannenbaum address that. Yeah, um, sorry, I've been, uh, uh, I've been reading up on uh, uh, the summary proceedings because uh, my attorney told me that this was a possibility. So I found out the board meeting was today and thought I would be here to defend the defend the company in case well, it came up. So somebody's that, not really, you're, this is, so you're basically telling me that you were going to show up at our board meetings until we did a summary suspension? Well, in light of the arrest two weeks ago, I, I thought it would be in my best interest to show up. Didn't we have a board meeting since before the, since that arrest? November 20th, I believe. There's a board meeting on the 20th, 20th but maybe. there's been a special meeting. And we the have meeting. these without having him at the board meeting. So you, you didn't receive a phone call from anyone that would indicate that this was going to happen today, or an email? No. And I well, don't I know that I believe you. I was up here on other matters. And oh, I know you're always requested here. to step, you know, to step in this morning. Uh, well, you might have a cot here for all I know. I don't know. <laughs> 
Go ahead. All right, if I may. Thank you. Um, uh, this licensee has been open for a period of six years, and until until July 13th, when, uh, when these, this March operation took place, uh, there was, uh, it, it had maintained a, a good record. Um, the main issue why we're here today is because, as you had indicated, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the arrest and, and sales of uh, narcotics by an employee. Um, and before I get to that, I just want to make mention that um, when on July 13th, there were 13 violations issued, summonses issued by the police department, all of those were dismissed in criminal court, and we have the dismissal certificates. Well, you know, I, I, I wouldn't waste your time on that. That's you not know that's positive, exactly. and I understand that. I'm just bringing this out. The Department of Health was mentioned as issuing a number of violations. Uh, there were uh, eight of those 15 were dismissed after hearing. Um, with regard to the um, premises itself, you're dealing with a premises that is a very substantial premises. Um, it has a capacity of approximately 2,000 people in season. Uh, it, it has between six and eight managers. The person uh, that was arrested was just elevated to a junior manager. He was the bartender, head bartender. He was elevated to junior manager, which gave him the ability to schedule the bartenders. Uh, other than that, that so was you're the, acknowledging he was in a supervisory capacity. He, 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 not yes, to that extent, he was in a supervisory capacity. He, um, but he answered to the manager above him. He he would answer to uh, Stefan Denoya, who is well known in the uh, hospitality trade. has a very has an excellent re uh, reputation. Has an excellent um, resume. The uh, the, the license, so he, he and who's Josh Rosen? I may. Uh, Josh Rosen is my business partner and is the uh, person who liaises most with the uh, management of the company. Okay. Who's management of the company? The uh, so our management team varies uh, by season. So in the summer we have we might have six to eight people in management. Um, it's a tr I guess a uh, we have a management structure that that changes depending on how busy the business is. Uh, but Stefan Denoyer is the, the only year-round manager we have. And you guys have other licenses? No, this is our only one. And it's just the two of you are partners? Uh, there's also, uh, on the uh, license is FM and AC Corp, which is a, uh, uh, another party on the license. Uh, the, the individual members of that company, or the owners of that company, are Fernando Mateo and Alain Chevreau, uh, though, I should add that we recently submitted an application for an approval of corporate change indicating that uh, that company no longer holds membership interests in Manhattan River Group LLC, but is holding a, uh, their, their, their voting rights have been taken away, and they're now uh, holding just an economic interest, and they have no board appointment rights any longer. So that change of, uh, that change of corporate, that corporate change application was submitted last week. I don't know if it's made it through to, the, through to you guys yet. I don't have it in the system yet. Okay. It could be on the table. So I just want to point out that the, the, this person that was arrested, the employee, although he was recently elevated to a junior management position, he certainly was not a manager with unequivocal management authority to run the business. Um, this is a business that in season employs approximately 200 uh, people, as I said, and six to eight managers. Um, there were a total, I think, was he the only bar manager? Uh, I have a list of your employees here. That's why I'm asking you. Yeah, I mean, there are other people involved in the sale of beverages, uh, supervising people who are in the, involved in the sale of beverages, so I would say he's not the only bar manager, no. Well, you have a list of your employees, and he's listed at, he's the only one listed as bar manager. I mean, they all have different... You know, how many bars do you have? We have three, uh, three licensed bars. And how many bartenders at a time? I mean, it depends on what's going on, but it could be... On a Friday night in August. Could be um, again. It depends on what we have, whether all of these different zones are, are open. Uh, but it could be as many as five, like 10, 10 bartenders, not including service bartenders. Okay. 
I'm sorry, can I just, yeah. he, he wouldn't be supervising all of them. He would only be supervising bartender, bartenders in uh, one zone. Well, you I should you, also add, I'm sorry. You guys submitted an employee list during the inspection and uh, in July of 2018, and on that employee list, he is listed as the only bar manager. Right, but there's another fellow named Andrew Walters who's in charge of uh, the, a whole other bar area, and then uh, 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 there's another fellow named uh, Ricky Santos who's in charge of uh, other bartenders. So we, you know, it's, these are titles, um, but they each, you know, they, their supervisory capacities. Uh, you know, we have we have a lot of employees that have to be managed. I should also add uh, that uh, uh, the the fellow who was arrested was also uh, was it was temporarily elevated to manager during the busy season, and at some point during the I don't know exactly when I think in early early September he was uh, returned to his. Uh, uh, position as a, a head bartender and was not did not have supervisory capacity any uh, any longer. So again, it was a temporary elevation during the busy season, and uh, brought back down to a, to a. Uh, I'm head sorry, bartender. he's still working at your. Oh no, he was terminated as oh. soon as we uh, as soon as we we found out about the charges. So there were, um, I believe, between July and November, we're talking about six sales, one of which is over half an ounce. Which is not personal well, use. Again, we obviously the ownership and senior management had no idea this was going on. They don't condone it. They'd never had this type of issue before. This employee was immediately fired when it happened. Two or three of these sales out of the six uh, took place off the premises. The initial conversation in almost every one occurred on the premise. Right. And we know how these, I mean, I'm sure you are familiar with I did this for a living. I right, know 100% how this went down. How, so, right, so you don't, you, know, you don't necessarily know, senior management doesn't necessarily know these conversations are going on. The bottom line was the guy they were buying from was the manager. He was a junior. And whatever you call him, he's the bar manager. Well, he's not a manager. You're going to obviously minimize it now. Well, he's not a manager. Also, I'm saying in the case was he's not a manager with unequivocal management authority. Says you guys. Correct, and I'm saying look at this as a whole. We have a premises. Yes, I see. That's what you don't want me to do because if you look at this as a whole, they're serving food that borders on rotten. They have mice. They're selling drugs, and it's not just cocaine. It seems to be a, a cornucopia of drugs. They are you not selling drugs, Mr. Chairman. We have this one their employees person managers that was engaged are selling drugs. In this, apparently engaged in the they're sale. They're running into policemen. They're, pa they're allowing their patrons to run into policemen. They're, they're, they're running a parking service where they're taking the cars, probably so the customers get, get illegal tickets, and then charging them for that. Mr. Tannenbaum would like to address those issues. All right, and I just want to point out that it was the licensee's management that called 911 on July 7th when they, and, uh, when they saw that there were people that were ill. So uh, with regard to the other... I, I'm not worried about that, but will he acknowledge that they're parking cars for $20 per car in violation of DOT signage where it says no, sign, no standing any time? The uh, valet parking operation was with the full knowledge and consent of the Parks Department and the NYPD. We had uh, we have a subcontractor agreement that's been filed with the city. So basically, you have a get out of jail free card from the city of New York that says you can park in no standing zone. Abso absolutely not, sir. Um, I'm I'm just explaining the the way that the valet worked. It was the the area where we park the cars is a uh, parkland, not subject to the jurisdiction of DOT. Um, there there's plenty of information out there in support of. I have of pictures here that that show that the valet parking was on a city street. It's a, it's a city street, but the city street is, is actual parkland. The parkland begins west of the Henry Hudson Parkway and extends all the way so to So you're the, telling me that the, the Parks Department told your business that you could you could valet park cars illegally? Uh, there was no illegal parking. They, they were allowed to use the parking lot that's adjacent to our licensed premises. We have pictures here where they're parked in no standing zones, where your employees park them. The, uh, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what photographs you're looking at, sir, but the, I, I'm... The, the, all of the parking was coordinated, was allowed by the Parks Department and with the permission of the 34th Precinct and in des areas designated by the 34th Precinct. They, the operation operated for five years without any, uh, any issues. And have until, issues now. Until, the, uh, in, until the, uh, 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 that one incident where um, uh, uh, a person who was allegedly intoxicated hit a police car. 
Um, um, you know, we, we have standard operating procedures for how to deal with intoxicated people, uh, or a valet company does for when, when uh, that does happen, because it does happen on occasion. Uh, the operating procedure is that it sounds like it happens often. We have six people that end up in the hospital. I'm sorry, I thought we were talking about valet, sir. Well, we're but talking about all of it. I understand, but the, let me just may, may I finish the val the valet. The operating procedure for when intoxicated, visibly intoxicated people try to reclaim their cars is that the car is parked in a garage down uh, down Dykeman Street, and the person is given a ticket and asked to come back the whenever they can, whenever they're sober to come get their car. As far as the as far as the incident you're talking about on July 7th. Um, the, we noticed, uh, or some, some of our, ma our management noticed, I think it was Stefan and uh, uh, Mr. Rosen noticed that uh, the, there were people who were, who were visibly ill, um, more, than, more, <coughs> more than one. We immediately called 911. Yeah, it wasn't actually, much more than one. We, we uh, immediately called 911 and immediately shut down the event because we weren't sure why these people were getting sick. Uh, and therein lies the problem. We right. don't know why they're getting sick. Could but it be drugs that are being sold on the premises? Could it be rotten chicken that's being sold by the restaurant? Well, those were customers at a party and not at a... Not well, could it be the spray the paint thing. that you're spraying them as they walk into the place? That was, that was, not, uh, provide, that was provided by the, the well, operator. Well, so you're talking about jurisdiction, and you're talking about... I'm going to make this very, okay. very, very simple for you. I'm worried about the fact that this is the state liquor authority. We are charged, and you are under our jurisdiction when it comes to liquor, and somebody sure. who manages a bar at your establishment is selling extraordinary amounts of so, illegal substances. I, I completely it's the very definition of health, safety, and welfare. Yes. I and the state liquor authority cannot close your establishment, but we should absolutely issue an order that you are no longer able to serve alcohol or traffic in alcoholic beverages. I think it's very simple. I think that the public health, safety, and welfare is, in, uh, is imperatively in danger if you continue to serve alcoholic beverages, and that is why we are here for summary suspension. May I, may I respond, sir? You, you are absolutely welcome to respond. Thank you. Um, you know, we, we we keep on replaying how we could have uh, how we could have uh, caught this this guy. Before, you know, when he was selling drugs, we had we had no idea it was happening, um, despite close supervision and frankly a very small operation towards the in the in the winter months. Um, we you know he uh, during uh, you know uh, the the sales were were conducted the, the last two or three off of the premises. Uh, I think sh because he knew that this type of activity is not is never permitted it. At, at or because he was buying bigger amounts, and it's a lot easier to pass. It's a lot harder to pass a half an ounce of cocaine in the in the presence of all these other people. Did that ever enter your mind? Uh, I mean, uh, listen, I'm uh, sorry, I'm, re I'm really trying. Do you know to how big a half an ounce is? No, I have no idea how it's big. It's about it's about the size of your fist. Uh, again, we're you know we're we're still conducting an investigation. We've indicated to the uh, ADA that we're willing to do whatever we can to cooperate in the investigation. Um, I, I, I don't you know we're we're really doing everything we can to try to make sure that this type of thing never happens again. We're not sure how it happened in the first place, considering we have so much management and so much control over what what go what goes on on the premises. Um, uh, you know, we, we there's been no history. Of of drug uh, uh, of drug cells on the on the premise other than this uh, one controlled uh, by I also want to correct it was not narcotics it was internal affairs that ran the investigation um, so we're you know we're really doing every, we're we're really actively engaged in trying to figure out why no, this I'm is not following you why does it matter that it's in that it's internal just, affairs just correcting the record. Uh, so just so it's uh, I mean you know I, 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 that 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 says a ton to me that it was internal I, I, affairs. I think the point is that it wasn't pervasive. This wasn't going on with a number of employees or with upper management or senior management or with ownership. We're talking about one person. That person was immediately dismissed and removed from the uh, from his employment. With him gone, it, 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 it's not, no it also was not one time. This was this said, what, yes, in that in that time, instance it was it one person. But it was pervasive. You know how simple it is for someone to to to. to to sneak. Counsel, you have to understand that from our point of view, you argue that there would, you know, these, this establishment can contain up to 2,000 people. Our job is to protect the welfare and safety of these particular 2,000 people. If 2,000 people all found out that the bar manager is selling $600 worth of cocaine, that's a disaster. Like, 
you're, you know, you're arguing it's large, it's small, you know. You, I'm not arguing large or small. I'm arguing that he was the only person involved in it. No one else, no other employee or person in management or ownership or any other employee, regardless of how low the employment, the, the employee is on the scale, no one else was found to be involved in that situation. We are talking about an isolated person, one person. That person has been removed from the situation. There is no, with him removed, there is no longer an issue of public health safety. Yeah, but uh, it was a situation that was even, it was a situation that was already bad. As, as counsel pointed out in her argument, this, all these charges went out in, before this arrest. And many of these sales happened after these charges went out. You would think at some point that there would be an uptick in the supervision. These charges indicate to me that there is no supervision. There was an uptick in supervision. Well, there clearly was no. Because he started, he didn't sell less, he sold more. Things, many of these things, even with the Department of Health, well, this is brought up, men, much of that was dismissed Council, after the hearings. no general liability, no public assembly when you have 2,000 people, okay. no certificate of occupancy, no security guard roster, contaminated alcohol, pre-mixing, major, major fire safety violation, repeatedly, DOB violations, uh, you know, and we're not just worried about the safety of the patrons who seem to be able to just buy drugs off the floor of your establishment. Police officers are getting hit. You know, it's not just focal point, but this is the safety of, the people who are supposed to protect us. And, and so I really appreciate that you came down here. And But this is really not the forum. I mean, there is a due process in the, in the authority. You know, you have to take it up. You have to go and produce the, the witnesses when you go to trial on this. And so I think that. Yeah, that, that's what we would, but we really uh, welcome the opportunity to do that. And we, you know, the, the many of the charges uh, we believe are erroneous. We did produce a certificate of occupancy. We have a, we are, our, our, our licensing is through the small business services and not through DOB, which is why there's sometimes some confusion where a waterfront property and small business services is our uh, DOB equivalent licensing authority. Uh, we have certificates of, uh, of authority. We have uh, uh, well, this is all, we're not going to, this is not stuff we deal with I, today. So, I, I, I mean, at the so. end of the day, based on what's presented to us, and I have, and you've been here plenty of times, Mr. Buscemi, I've taken licenses and revoked them for much less than this, that, I, I mean, as counsel said, I don't think that this is even close as far as it's whether right now that this place is a, a, a safety risk to the public uh, and not to mention to your employees and to anyone else in this neighborhood as far as the drugs and all the other aspects of the charges that are included here. So I'm voting to summarily suspend. I'll vote to summarily suspend as well. And I'm sure counsel's office is ready to go to hearing whenever you're prepared to go, so. Right there. Yes. All right, so Mr. Mailer will be in touch to schedule the hearing. I believe he's been trying to do that with regard to what went out in August. And, we, and just so you know, like, we don't take this step lightly. You know, it's not just, oh, let's just do it. Like, you know, counsel's office go through many rounds of discussions whether it comes here for this purpose or not. Oh, for you so. to make a decision and to bring the summary. Yes, I understand yes, that, Commissioner. That's a, it's I understand that. I've been here long enough to understand that it's, we understand it's thought out. what the outcome is. All right, thank you. All right, we have one more request for a summary suspension in Albany. It's item 2469D, Darby O'Gills of Hyde Park, Inc. Ms. Ogden. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioner. Council's office is Good morning, Lisa. Request. I'm sorry? Good morning, Lisa. Okay, thank you. Council's office is respectfully requesting an emergency order of summary suspension for the license issued to Darby O'Gills of Hyde Park, Inc., doing business as Darby O'Gills. The notice of pleading in support of this request involves a multi-agency underage operation that occurred just this past weekend on November 30th where numerous minors were found in the premises. Uh, but, but before I relay the specifics of the detail, I'd like to provide a little background of the licensee and the establishment. Um, there are two corporate principals. Craig Goya serves as president, and Brian Keenan serves as vice president. Mr. Goya and Mr. Keenan are principals in, in two additional licenses together. 
Um, it's one, they have one OP in New Paltz and one OP in Poughkeepsie. And Mr. Goya is a principal in two more establishments, an OP in New Paltz and a, a grocery in Poughkeepsie. The method of operation for this establishment states it's a restaurant tavern and that it will not have security personnel. It has one ad bar license that's located inside the establishment and there are no approved outside areas for the sale or consumption of alcohol. On the evening of November 30th, um, SLA investigators were in the establishment in an undercover capacity. They observed approximately 200 patrons inside and they directly observed 26 minors get served alcoholic beverages and each of them provided a, a written statement that, that's, uh, which are contained in SLA records. In addition to these 26, 46 minors also provided written statements indicating they were served alcoholic beverages. And these statements are also contained in our records. That's 72 minors that were sold alcoholic beverages. And as you can see on the notice of pleading before you, there are 72 counts of sales to minors. Also on the date, the Department of Motor Vehicles issued appearance tickets to 115 minors for um, possessing a fake ID. The inter investigators conducted interviews with the staff and some of the staff members advised that they're paid in cash off the books. Um, payroll records weren't available at the time of the inspection, but a request to review them is pending. Seven employees identified themselves as security. They're all licensed by the Department of State, but as I previously mentioned, the licensee indicated in the method of operation that it would not employ security personnel. SLA investigators had previously made an undisclosed visit before the night in question on October 19th of this year. It was during that visit that a determination was made to conduct this underage operation due to the, the volume of young looking patrons in the establishment that appeared to be under 21. Um, but also on this date of October 19th, investigators ob observed the sale and consumption of alcohol in an area outside in the back of the premises. Um, again, that's not licensed. And uh, there were approximately 200 patrons in this area alone. Investigators also purchased alcohol at an unlicensed bar in this location. I also wanted to mention a little about the disciplinary history of the licensee that's contained in our records. Um, although there's no adjudicated matters for the licensee, there is a history of sales to minors complaints in the record, and a letter of warning was also sent regarding a wholesale matter relating to gifts and services. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, the two principles of this license hold other licenses that do have adjudicated matters relating to sales to minors. And even more on point, uh, Mr. Goya was a party to a notice without prejudice interview that was conducted by our Enforcement Bureau in March of 2016 regarding sales to minors for an OP establishment that he has in Poughkeepsie in which Mr. Keenan is also a principal of. It's clear that the license- What's the name of that one? place that one is Union Square okay okay um, it's clear that the licensee is not properly supervising the establishment to ensure that minors are not consuming alcohol the majority of the patrons found in the premises were under 21 years of age and 72 counts of, of selling alcohol to minors are contained in the notice of pleading before you. And these are very serious incidents that have already adversely affected the health, safety, and welfare of the community. In consideration of them, immediate action in the form of an emergency order of summary suspension is required. Thank you. Can you tell me um, either in October or November what our investigators observed as far as what they saw security-wise at the door? Um, they did see in, uh, security at the door um, scanning identifications. It appeared to be a, some sort of a scanning device they were using. They're scanned, they scanned the undercover investigators' IDs on November 30th. They also scanned the identifications that the minor showed to gain entry. Um, that's really all they observed the security staff doing um, with regard to any, you know, um, duties, but um, on the 30th of November, the one of the bouncers did tell an investigator that that device that they're using to scan is, is 
just merely takes a picture of the identification. Um, Mr. Goya claimed that he does have an ID checker um, and that it checks IDs, but quite frankly, there were 115 tickets issued by the DMV for possessing a fake. Um, the device that they're using cannot possibly be checking the authenticity of these IDs, and his, his claim is just not supported respectfully. Council, do you have any information on how how underage these minors actually are? Are they 18, they're 20? Um, I do have the breakdown of their ages. Of the 72 statements that we obtained, there are 29 18-year-olds, 24 19-year-olds, and 19 20-year-olds. So the majority of were 18, 19, tender years. And this bar is located relatively close to Marist College? That is correct. Um, my, it's my understanding based on the investigation that Marist students often attend functions and um, other events at this establishment. Okay. Are you ready to vote? Yes. Commissioner Fan. Um, this licensing um, partnership obviously is on notice uh, for potential sale to minor because of the interview in March of 16. Um, Clearly, a freshman bar, since most of the underage um, who gave uh, statements are, un are 18 or under, possibly. Um, I guess the operation had too many security guards and do not catch any fake IDs, so I don't really see how that even makes sense. Um, this is a threat to public welfare, health, and safety. I vote to summarily suspend this license. I vote to summarily suspend on the same grounds. Thank you. All right. All right, we're going to, Mr. Buscemi has two matters. We're going to call because he's late for a hearing for a different licensing. 2459, 32SIFB LLC, and 32 Star Island Associates LLC. This is a CNC offer. I accept. I'll accept as well. Thank you. Uh, we also have 2460 is 2945 Bar Corp. Again, this is a CNC offer. What are they going to be doing differently? He's got to obviously uh, watch his noise complaints. He's also he's also looking to get out of the business at, at, at this point. Um, he doesn't feel it's for him. So he doesn't want to continue on in the in the industry. I mean, he paid twelve thousand dollars in May for similar occurrences over multiple days. So seems like he can't get it under control. Well, he's, that's what he he wants out. He just doesn't feel this is for him. I don't know whether the application has been filed, whether the thirty days is run yet, but he's uh, he's looking to get out. I'll accept. I'll accept too, but this, as she pointed out, this is their second focal point, another one. Yeah, he, he, there's he doesn't not, want there's not another one, let's put it that way. Do we have anything I pending? It. Oh, I didn't even look. Yes, oh, it's all right. Go, I'll accept. I, Go ahead. Okay. Have a good day. Right. Jonathan, I think you can get rid of Buffalo. I don't think anybody's going to show up at this point. All right. The next time is back here in New York. We have an interpreter on a matter. It's yeah, and you haven't pulled it out yet. 2467, El Marquez, Inc. With your interpreter right here. I haven't pulled it out yet. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Why don't you come on, come up there. Yes, both of you. Yes, uh, good morning. Wait, we have to get the interpreter up. Yes. All right, so ma'am, can you put your name on the record, the interpreter? Yes, Myra, M-A-Y-R-A, -A. last name is Mora, M-O-R-A, accurate communication. I'm from Geneva. And can you just make sure you you communicate whatever's said here? Yes, Thank, sir. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Yes, good, uh, good morning. My name is Michael Curran. I'm uh, 
appearing for El Marquez Inc. Uh, we, we're in, actually in the middle of a, a number of matters. Uh, now, one of the, I'm sorry, before I uh, begin, one of the problems we have is that there are two attorneys involved with this situation, and I'm not party to uh, the other matters. And in fact, the other attorney has not reached out to me. I was the original attorney for this company. Apparently, this is a successive attorney. Uh, the only matters of which I was involved, if I may give you the case numbers. There's no point because we don't have them here in front of us. Oh, anyway. you don't? Okay. Well, essentially, the the uh, only case number we have is is this one that that we're here to talk about. And 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 they they're aware of the prior history, but not anything pending. So which case? I'm sorry. Which case? Because we had one two two six four eight. Yeah, okay, that's the that's what's before you right now, and then. The only other thing they know about is the sale to minor mm -hmm. in April with the ten thousand yes. dollar penalty. Okay, I'm not aware. I'm not aware of that case. Right, and there was also a sale to minor and a failure to conform charge from last year with a five thousand dollar penalty. Uh, yes, counsel, do you need to go outside and like talk to your client and get the history? No, no, I, because I have the history. They, okay, so you just said you don't know about the April because well, there was a ten thousand dollar penalty that was paid after full board at the end of October. So okay. the numbers that are here are going to be different because of that. Well, we have uh, up to the end of 2017, I was involved with those cases. I was not involved with cases after 2017. In fact, we have one case with a decision pending. Uh, t there, were, there were four cases, one of which was dismissed that I am aware of. Can I give you the case numbers on the record? No. No, it's not relevant. What are you here for? This is a this is a hearing that the ALJ sustained the charge. So what are you here for? Well, I'm here to we had controverted uh, the charge, and uh, months after the fact, by the way, which I don't understand. Well, we weren't served the decision, so I had asked for that true. Yes, I had asked for permission okay. to controvert. I did put a controversion in. We Hopefully, have you have that. We do. And uh, uh, in regard to that particular uh, decision. I had raised some issues. For example, there was, there was a pervasive or I should say continuing error by the police department. They're using an affidavit which is uh, inadvertently is uh, perjured. Uh, basically what they do is they use an undercover to go in. Uh, we dispute the fact that he was, he was actually underage because uh, we have someone checking IDs at the door, etc. But in this instance, he, uh, the affidavit is sworn by the by the supposedly by the uh, undercover, but the but the signatory on it is a police officer who is actually accompanying the undercover. So the undercover doesn't sign the affidavit. A second police officer does swear he's the under he's the undercover. <laughs> I mean it's it's absurd. I objected to admission of that document twice in two underage hearings, and yet the hearing officer d doesn't even mention it in either decision. Uh, first of all, that is that is the key document in the apparent prosecution of my client. Uh, and uh, the document is inadmissible as an inadvertent perjured statement. So I, you know, uh, in this instance, what happened? And you're missing a point. That's, that, that may be a key document, but the, the officer testified. Yes. Well, you don't think that evidence is key? Well, the problem was Not only did they testify, but they te she or he testified, I don't know if it's a he or she, testified that they observed the sale. Is this, are we talking about 122648? Uh, Correct? 122648? Yes. She actually said she had no specific recollection of what happened. That's what she said. And that is on a tape. Supposedly, the taping equipment was not uh, very, very reliable. We kept, uh, the machine kept going off. We kept having interpreters getting hung up upon. But in any event, she said, and I was there as an officer of the court, she said she did not specifically recall what happened. Well, and that's, I'm not going to get into that. I, the ALJ's decision makes it clear that she indicated that she did. And, well, the and, and, not, not, and she didn't do it from outside. She was inside the premises. So she then reported it directly to her supervisor. So I, we don't get into factual. That's what the ALJ is there for, to determine the factual well, part of this. The, the, your client, I assume, is Mr. Santa Maria. Yes, he's here to my Testified that he recalled the police officer entering the location. No, later, later, Your Honor. Uh, that was after, uh, after the... Uh, no, he testified. According to the LJ, he recalled the, the, the police officer entering the licensed premise and sitting at a table. 
And, he, and then he tried to say that he didn't sell the two beers to the underage, that he sold them to the officer, who then, he says, shared them with the underage person. Well, it's, either way, it's a sale to minor. Well, he, so yeah. I don't know what you're doing here. Well, you are, uh, sir, sir, may I, re I respectfully dis disagree. This particular factual finding is not correct. Well, then you have a method to go and argue that. This is not the place to argue it. You, ha you can take an Article 78 and go in that direction. And it sounds like there's multiple other cases pending, I, so I would recommend that you do that quickly. But I don't know, otherwise I don't know why you're here. The, the fine that was imposed was much less than should have been imposed. I don't know how that happened. I'm guessing we didn't know no, the, the prior history. No, chronologically. There were, there were, yeah, so there were two Salem Meyer cases on in September. This was the first one you imposed 3,500. The second one, on the same calendar, you imposed 5,000. Oh, even though we did it backwards as far as when they occurred. You, it was just how they showed up in the calendar. Okay. And then a month later, you hit him with the 10,000. So this, he's, getting, he's getting the standard fine for the first sale to minor on this case. And that's what we gave him. Uh, we, we, and we hadn't had the decision in time, so we tried to come to it. But chronologically, you realize that it was the second sale, but now is the third adjudication. And well, I think basically we at it would be at cancel. Well, I, I think that what uh, Mr. Donnelly said was it was the first sale, supposedly. Not chronological. No, no. That's no, oh. not what I said. What I said was it was the first one that we dealt with. Right on the calendar. Uh, well, I, I see what you're saying, but I, you know, at, the, at present, I, uh, as I said, the, the third sale, whatever alleged sale, I was not involved with that case. I don't know. Yeah, but that's not relevant to us. I know. I know it isn't, but. Uh, Respectfully, I'm going to make a comment. You, you know, you may or may not accept this, but I believe that in this area, it's a, it's a densely Hispanic area, and the, uh, there, are these, there are hundreds or maybe even a thousand of these kinds of small establishments, mom and pop operations, and <clears throat> what's happening is the police are targeting specific uh, establishments, and they're going after them great guns. Now, I don't know what the reason for that is, but- I do. Well, it's selective enforcement. No. Yes, it is. Actually. It's Roosevelt Avenue. Yes, And they're getting is. enormous amounts of complaints about Roosevelt Avenue. You know why I know that? Because we get enormous amounts of complaints about Roosevelt Avenue. So they aren't doing selective enforcement. They're doing focused enforcement based on the complaints they receive, which is what we do. Well, I'm sorry. I have to disagree because I know there's another establishment that's not on Roosevelt Avenue. It's getting the same treatment. And what they're basically doing is they're going in and they're setting up these phony underage uh, 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 ticket issuances, which come to you eventually. So you're telling me it All these are dismissed in the criminal court, which you said is doesn't matter, I know. And, I it ha and that happens regularly. You're telling me that we, right in front of me I have three sales to minor. You're telling me that none of those occurred. We Even though he was found, I either pled or found guilty in all three of them. I, pro I apologize for not knowing about the third, but the third allegation, but the first two are bogus charges. Okay. Well, well I'm I don't gonna, know I'm how you don't know, because your client paid $10,000. Well, I just know that he paid it, because there's another attorney and we, there's not a communication. Yeah, but he paid. Yes, he did. What, did the attorney pay? Uh, the attorney may have paid, yes. I'm going to sustain the sense. charge. Well, and char this and is just before your recon, so you're going to oh, okay. deny reconsideration? I'm going to deny reconsideration, yes. And Commissioner Fan? No, I'm going to deny reconsideration. So, uh, I'm going to cancel. So, uh, what do we have pending? <coughs> We have a bunch of things pending. I'd say three, maybe four. Four, yeah, well, one you'll probably get within the next. Are we still talking? No, I'm sorry. Are we still talking about this this licensee? Uh, they're talking about what's pending for the licensee. Right. We just had a, we just had a, a decision on another case where two out of three charges were dismissed, and the third one is uh, I would say is double jeopardy. It's the same charge twice, and and one of which was dismissed. There's the, no double jeopardy in administrative law. Well. I understand that, but ultimately that would yeah, have Mr. to be Mr. Curran, I, I mean, the members have voted on this case, and we have people waiting. I understand. To so, so the so you're voting on one single case, correct? One, two, two, six, four, eight. We you you asked it's us true. to reconsider it, yes. and we denied recon to reconsider it. Right, so the 3,500 that we imposed a month ago is in place. Can we uh, have uh, some time to pay that? You'll, you'll get a new letter. Okay, that'll give you four weeks to pay. All right, fine. Thank you very much. Yep. All right, we're now going to move to Albany. And the first item there is 2377. And I believe there's someone in New, in New York here as well. Maverick Mind, LLC. You're done.
No, because it was that was we had two on at the same time. Yes, that we took. Yes, that we took. So the second one he got six thousand on. The third one he got ten. The next one. I, I, yeah, I think that's pretty safe to say. Uh, we have the the licensee in Albany, uh, the applicant in Albany, and I'm guessing Mr. Lynn here is in opposition. <coughs> okay, no can you way. put your name on the record in Albany first? Sure, Karen Greco from Glen Cabista and Associates. Matthew Broadmerkel, Bin 94 Wines. No. Maverick Mine. Mr. Lynn, go ahead. Uh, good morning, uh, Charles Lynn, uh, in opposition to this application. I re represent JSSVG, Inc., uh, at Route 32, Vales Gate. Um, there's also another uh, gentleman here pre from Preet Liquors, uh, who, is, who I do not represent, that is here as well. And there may be, I believe, oppos other opposition up in Albany, but I would like to start first. Sure. Uh, this application is a removal of about four miles from Salisbury Mills to Vales Gate, a hamlet in the town of New Windsor. Uh, the area survey listed the seven closest stores and the SLA proximity report I have annexed to my papers as Exhibit 1. It evidences the closest store, JSSVG -J in Vales Gate, just 3.39 miles from applicant. Both applicant and JSSVG are at the junction of Route 32 with Routes 94 and 300. There's no public convenience and advantage to have two equivalent liquor stores literally across the street from each other at the exact same intersection in a highly rural area. The current store, JJSV, is approximately 6,400 square feet. Uh, the applicant square f with, with 6,400 square feet with 4,800 of retail space. The applicant is approximately 2,400 square feet with 1,800 square feet of retail space. Also part of that intersection spills into an adjacent region of the town of Cornwall to the south, which has the second closest store, Canterbury Liquor Store, just 1.8 miles away. And the third closest store to the north in New Windsor is Preet Liquors, who's just 2.75 miles away. There have been three recent liquor store disapprovals upon public convenience and advantage in New Windsor. Uh, they were in 2012, 2016, and 2018. Uh, the 2018 one was just before the board just two months ago. It was New Windsor Liquors in 215 Quasack Avenue in New Windsor, uh, CO number 2212216, and that was about 2.9 miles from this applicant, and all these were disapproved based upon public convenience and advantage. In that 2018 application, the recent one, the question of population growth in the area was a crucial factor on the authority's determination. Uh, no uh, statistics were provided by the applicant. Uh, attached to my paperwork are the current statistics data for New Windsor. According to the most recent demographic data available from the Census Bureau, released in December 2017, New Windsor indicates it has a population of 8,790. The population change from 2010 to 2016 was a decline of 132 people, or 1 percent. The estimated population demographics for New Windsor in 2017-2018 estimates total population of 8,922, an increase of 132, which is a little less than 1 percent. Okay. Exhibit three of my presentation shows the proximity report for the stores at applicant's current address, 2130 Route 94 in Salisbury Mills. My exhibit four shows the proximity report for the removal location at 115 Temple Hill Road in New Windsor, which is four miles away. JSSVG, which was 4.17 miles, and the third closest store, is now to be the closest store at 2,400 feet at the same intersection as applicant. 
Canterbury Liquor Store, which was 4.48 miles away, which was the fifth closest store, is now the second closest store at 1.81 miles away. Treat Liquors Corp, which was 4.08 miles away, uh, is now the third closest, it was the second closest store, now the third closest store, but now from 4.08 miles is now 2.75 miles from the applicant. And finally, Orange County Wine and Liquor, which was 7.4 miles away from the applicant, would be the fourth closest store at 3.28 miles from the applicant. It should be noted that the uh, two How are you measuring these? Because those are not the numbers we have. Uh, I have a service that I use uh, that uses Google uh, for these distances, and uh, it's, it's been an individual that I've used for about 10 years now, and I double check it by going on Google as well. So they're as the, as the eagle flies. But they're pretty close to what I believe you have on, on LAMP. Saying you do it as the eagle flies or as driving distance? Uh, it depends upon which uh, application I have. In this which case, it's as the, e as the eagle flies. I we see. So some are direct and some are driving distances. We do driving distance based yeah. on Google. That would make more sense. Right, and also it would extend the distances too, in this case. Well, it's not two miles away if you have to drive four miles. No, but I'm saying the distance from Salisbury to New Windsor, that distance would be extended so that, as an example, JSVG would be more than the uh, four and a half miles away. So now that's even extended, so they're going more than four and a half miles away to be only 2,400 feet away. <coughs> that's what I'm saying. No, I understand what you're saying. <coughs> Um, one of the uh, other important items of this application is that there are five letters in support of applicant. The five letters in support from neighborhood representatives are all generic, trite, and nondescript and should not be dispositive for approval of this application. I even uh, made copies of them to add to my presentation. Both Orange County Legislature Kevin Hines and Town Supervisor George Green of the Town of Win New Windsor solely state that, quote, this move will serve as a positive economic impact for the town, unquote. It's interesting that both use the exact same language verbatim without any exp example of explanation. Uh, County Legislature Joseph Menuda says that, quote, this location is bustling with retail shoppers, unquote. I've attached an article from the Orange County Post dated October 5th, 2018. It states that this price chopper plaza at Vales Gate is adding only 8,000 square feet of additional retail shops to include a Starbucks coffee shop, a Pet Supplies Plus store, and room for several additional retail stores in the middle. And it should be noted that one of which is this applicant, which is stated in the county legislature's letter. This does not appear to me to be a resurgence of retail investment and community renewal. And James Scoffis, a member of the State Assembly, really does not state any economic reason for support other than repeating from the applicant that they did not fare well in the current location, believe their business can thrive in the larger renovated mall, even while there is a liquor store in another New Windsor shopping center in the hope that there is room for two liquor stores in the area. He himself gives no opinion. And then finally, the last one, Senator William Larkin states that, and again, in just general terms with mo no specifics, that applicant will be beneficial to the New Windsor community. He does not state that applicant has plans to increase, he does state that applicant has plans to increase their support of New York wines and to highlight local wineries. As to that statement, I've attack, uh, attached a redacted copy of my page three on my original submission where I set forth uh, a itemization of the wine tastings that my client has at JSSVG, uh, the social media which they utilize, and a listing, a long list of New York wines and spirits and small producers that they have, which is an extensive variety for the, for the public. Thank you. 
It's true that applicant will be in a plaza with a super price chopper as the anchor store within that plaza. However, JSSVG Inc., the closest store at the same intersection, is in a plaza with a super shop right and its anchor store within the big town plaza center. And who's here with you today? Uh, here with me are the two principals of JSSG, which is Salvatore Grippi and John Stolucci. Saluti, excuse me. And the other individual here is from Preet Liquors, who is not my client. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Who's from? I would just, I'm sorry, Preet Liquors. You're uh, going to wrap it up, right? Yes, I was. Uh, and I just wanted to emphasize the fact I, we always utilize these politicians with letters because who would better know and, and understand what the requirements and the needs of a community are. And the reason why I prefaced my comments on each of the letters was to be able to show that in essence they really are nondescript. Well, and, and ironically, someone applied about five years ago for this exact location, and many of those same politicians wrote letters against it. <laughs> That's very so. interesting as well. But not shocking. Personally, no. Mr. Uh, who owns Preet? Come on up. If, unless, don't repeat what he just said, if, unless you have something to add. Yes, I own Preet, and I'll be the like, third closest store. We also applied for extension. Uh, we didn't get the result yet. We're planning to expand our store too. We applied for over three months ago and we didn't get the result. Working on it. Yes, I, I apologize for not adding that. He uh, has made an application to the Liquor Authority about three months ago. He's for, his store is 400 square feet. He's looking to expand to 800 square feet. Well, these guys filed first. So are you representing him now or what are we doing? That's a, that's a matter of fact. <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're is there any opposition up there? No, sir. All right, go ahead. Um, good morning, Chairman, Commissioner. Um, I understand what Mr. Lynn is saying with respect to the letters of support. Mr. Brad Merkel personally knows each and every one of those gentlemen. So it uh, shouldn't be construed that they're generic letters. He does well, know Well, I mean, I, I think it goes back to the fact that, that five years ago this exact location applied for a license. They were against it because they said there would be no public convenience and advantage. Since that time we've opened more stores in the area and now they're saying there is public convenience and advantage. So you take that as you will. Okay. All right. I think it also attests to the fact though that this is a removal application. Um, Maverick Mines within the next year is going to be losing their lease. They're in a declining strip mall that's gone from 16 office, eight offices and six eight businesses down to just three. Uh, the landlord is presumed to be looking to open up a Hasidic school in that area. Um, in support of the population, since 2010, there has been uh, about a 10% increase in population. Town of New Windsor itself is out of the 50 fastest growing towns yes, in, Orange Can in Orange County, or in the state? In the state. In the state is number 11, so it is also growing. Also at this intersection that we're looking, uh, the price chopper has about 120,000 retail across the street where JSSGV is. It's double that size in retail space. Third component is on the third corner is a Hannaford shopping center. So you're in one of the busiest intersections in Orange County referred to as the five corners. You have three major grocery stores. You have retail space upwards to two, four, five, almost 500,000 in retail space, and you have one liquor store. Um, also, with respect to JSSGV, their actual square footage based upon an ad in Buy, Biz, Sell is 7,600 square feet, not 6,400 square feet. And their article with respect to their looking to sell also says that for the past 11 years, their sales and profits continue to grow. Uh, the, sale, the, the, the sales we have, at least over the last four years, are, are pretty flat. Okay. If I, in the packet that I sent up last week is a copy of that advertisement from Buy This Sell, where they clearly state that their sales and profit continue to grow. Oh, and maybe they're operating more efficiently. Go ahead. As, sir, as far as the 
uh, population that they stated. I don't know where they got theirs. We have ours from the U.S. Census Bureau. New Windsor has 27,770 people who live there. And that is up 10% from 2010. It is up 2% from 2016. And also, there is from the planning board over 1,000 homes to be built in the New Windsor area in the next few years. That was also sent to you last week from the town, from the planning board. Also like to um, just make comment with respect to the protests. Canterbury did withdraw their protest. Uh, we didn't get anything, did we? Well, because it, um, it was withdrawn. We, we got a protest, and then we got yes. a, an email yes. from the uh, licensee saying they were withdrawing their protest. And then we got confirmation okay. Mr. that they were withdrawing them. All right. And that's the father to the applicant. That is correct. Did we know that? That's not on the application. So your current lease ends where? Oh, it it September. Expects when? September 2019. Canterbury. We don't ask if you have any relatives in the liquor business. But we ask spouses? or Because we get that information sometimes. We didn't get it here. Had to do a personal questionnaire on the spouse, or if they're you know, joint funds or something like that. But generally, it's not a direct question that we ask. Okay. You're breaking your lease to do this move, or you no. like, oh, you're applying now and then you plan to move after your lease expires? Well, the lease is expiring. The strip mall where they are now, as I had mentioned, had eight offices and eight retail due to mismanagement and the landlord currently not renewing because he has other uses for the property. There's only three retail businesses there now, and that's why you see on Maverick Mines gross sales report, their sales are decreasing because they do not have the, the, the flow that they had before. The facility is in complete disarray. He is not doing anything to maintain it. Um, and he has asked us to leave. He has asked us if we would break the lease and leave. Um, we're not till September, but at that point, we have no place to go. So they're giving you a buyout, and if this gets approved, you will move immediately? Correct. Well, within 30 days, we would okay. like to move. Yes. No, it's yeah, fine. I'm just asking. Yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah, no, no, no. All good. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, only because population is important, and I made the same mistake. I usually go on Google to see, I uh, get the zip code census bureau for the zip code, and I did on this situation, 12553, and I did get the exact information that the applicant stated, but then I found out that that zip code also includes Newburgh, and that's the reason for the no. discrepancy. No, it doesn't. Does not. I have a piece of paper, if the board requires, that I'll go to my file and I'll pick it out and specifically does say that. All right. Newburgh has its own Would you like code. to see that? No. I'm well, you may be talking about, are you talking about the city of Newburgh? The city of Newburgh has five different zip codes. One of those five is 12553. Okay. So you're saying some of that increase could be part of the city of Newburgh? Correct, yes. Okay. No, not according to what I have and what I've sent up to you. Specifically for the town of New Windsor, it makes mention that it borders the town of New Windsor. He's, say, he's, say, he's saying that he got his numbers based off the zip code is what he's saying, which is okay. why he went somewhere else to get them. Okay. We did not, well, I don't use the zip code. I use the actual town. Or That's why he went somewhere to go get different numbers because the zip, he found out that the zip code he was using included part of the city of Newburgh. Correct, Mr. Correct. Yes. Yeah, my numbers don't. The if required, I have it in my file. So I'm not following here. We, we rejected a license two months ago or less than that within two miles or within just over two miles of this place. What are you doing that these other stores, and th there are a lot of them in this area, aren't doing? Well, if I can just address that, the reason why New Windsor Liquors was disapproved is there was no convenience uh, for, for the new location, whereby we are in a major shopping center, and there was no support of any increase in population, which we have provided you today. 
also so that, and that's all, that that you know that's obviously been contested and you know I don't know either way it's not in my mind significant the population increase right, the either both numbers so the New Windsor application also was declined because they had stated that they were not going to be doing anything different. New Windsor was also rated in all of New York State the 11th fastest growing town in New York State. No one is, uh, I'm not arguing that, I'm just saying that there are a number of liquor stores there that we've had a number of applications over the last two years for this mm -hmm. area and we've rejected all but one since 2015 and the fourth closest store to where you're moving was one of the ones we did open, and that was in May of 2018. I mean, May of 2015. Okay, but uh, if you look at similar areas in population, they have tremendous amount of stores. You have a population of Newburgh of 31,000. The town, not the city, has eight stores. Okay. One of them is huge. The city of Newburgh, six stores, population of 28,000. This is the only place that has this large a population with one store. And also, Five Corners is the mecca of Orange County. It has 65,000 cars that go through there daily. We have three large superstores, seven or eight pizzerias. It goes on and on and on. There are multiple of every single store there. Okay. Anything else? What are your sales number, if you can just sort of roughly mention off the top of your head, in 16, 17, and 18, if you can? What, your sales? Yeah. Yes. I have them. I don't see it. 16 were about uh, 527,000. And then we have 17 at 486,000. And 18? We have to re we have to redo 18. We don't have a. We only had it up to August, which was oh, approximately 300,000. Oh, I'm looking at the. Looking at the. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong document. I thought I saw them. I got it. So their sales are declining because of the location where they're at now. I may have a moment. Okay. Go ahead, Commissioner Fan. If you want to know, uh, hold on. the members are voting, please. Well, oh, what, 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 what's your question? Well, you had asked a question that we didn't answer about what we were doing differently. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm just going to say, you know, we are also going to offer the classes uh, a, a different wine. We are not after being a box store of just on price alone and only price. We would like to add more convenience to the people in the area, and we would like to have more wines and, and educational classes that are different than they have. People deserve the, the right to choose. Okay, thank you. Are we ready to vote now? Yes. Commissioner Fan. Given that the current location is not going to work out, I realize that the move is going to move closer to an area with more economic activity. They're not going to pick a place where no one goes to move their store. That makes no sense. Um, so I am going to vote to approve. I'm going to vote to deny. Um, the two closest store sales have been flat over the last four years, and you, they go up, they go down. Not significantly either way, but they're, they're, they're not showing any type of increase in demand. We just opened the fourth closest, I believe, in 2015, and the population, while it has increased, I, I don't find that the increase demands that you move a store across the street from another store. I realize that the electeds in, have voted to um, support this store, but we denied this exact location, I believe, between five and six years ago, and um, at that time they voted, or they uh, wrote letters indicating that there was not public convenience and advantage. Not all of them, but some of them. 
uh, and we denied that application at this time at that time and I, I don't know that there's any added public convenience and advantage at this time and particularly since we just rejected a store in this general vicinity um, two months ago thank you okay the next item also in Albany 2409 Frank's Wine and Spirits Inc I just need two minutes. All right, we're going to take a brief recess. <clears throat>
right, we are back on the again. record, and we are calling item, in Albany, item 2409, French Wine and Spirits, Inc. Uh, I think it might be. Okay, try. 2409. All right, okay, let's try it again. All right, there we go. I think you, you got that number, right? Yeah. Is the, uh, the applicant here on that? Yes. 409? Yes. All right. Yeah. Is there anyone here in opposition? Yes. Uh, when you Somebody go ahead. Introduce yourself and go ahead. Good morning. My name is Dawn Carter from Carter's Wine and Liquor in Pleasant Valley. Between 2015 and 2017, I attended full board meetings to protest the reopening of the liquor store at 13 North Avenue. All three times that was that store was rejected due to the fact that the community couldn't support two, sto two stores in the area and because of its close proximity to me. The new store, Frank's, is the same. It's only 420 feet just to the east of me instead of to the west of me. Since 2015, my sales have been flat in Pleasant Valley, and I see no need for another liquor store in our town. Thank you. My name is Frank Riddle. I'm the project manager and real estate manager for Cotter's Landlord, Pleasant Valley Shopping Center. Uh, we respectfully ask the board uh, to reject the application due to a lack of public convenience or advantage. Cotter Liquor Store is located in our shopping plaza. It has adequate parking. Uh, and the proposed store by the applicant is along the state highway. Uh, there is a little parking lot behind the building, but it's probably going to have to be reserved for other tenants in the building because it's a multi-use building. Therefore, people are going to be parking along the state highway and there's not adequate parking there. Um, I've lived, I was raised in Pleasant Valley. Uh, I still live close by. Uh, I was raised there, I dined there, I shopped there, I even got married there. I've been a part of the Pleasant Valley community for 63 years. I have not seen anything developed in the town of Pleasant Valley that would give rise to the need for another liquor store at this location. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Karen Greco, Glen Cabista and Associates. Uh, Francesco Marinaro uh, from Frank's Wine and Spirits. And Giuseppina Marinaro from Frank's Wine and Spirits. Okay. With respect to the parking, I just want to address that first. Mr. Marinaro purchased the building, so so the liquor store at this point in time is going to be the only tenant, so that parking will not be shared. Um, I do recognize the fact that Cotter's is um, less than a half a mile away, and it's in a plaza. Isn't it 400 feet away? Yes. Well, if you consider the, you know, the edge of the property where it's... Well, I'm, I'm just talking of her, her reference to half a mile. It's less than a tenth of a mile. Uh, well, it's definitely... I'm sorry, yes. Um, yes, okay. you're, you're correct. Yes, it's a little bit more than that. Um, I, I think what I'd like to do here is go back to uh, the 13 North Avenue liquor store, uh, E.V. Howard, that was there from 2008 to 2014, and once again indicate that this could be considered a replacement of a liquor store. That was there for six years that coexisted with Potter's, and while both were operating, Potter's did show increase in profits while they both I absolutely did not state it in the hearing. Um, got, I got that from listening to past hearings that those comments were made that their sales had been increasing. Um, and that's the, the story isn't going to be that large. It's only 1,500 square feet total. Mr. Marinaro will be working with a blank canvas, all new equipment coming in, nice display. He's going to have classes and teachings. Um, he's going to have it well stocked. 
He's experienced in the alcohol industry. He's got a liquor store, uh, I'm sorry, owned a restaurant for 25 years. So he knows the, the beverage that people like to drink. And he'll initially stock his store with that which he feels is going to meet the needs of the community. Um, he does have the designated parking. It is located on a major road. 14,000 cars daily travel along that road coming off the Taconic going maybe into Poughkeepsie. It's visible and accessible being right there on 44 Cotters is, although it is in a plaza with sufficient parking, there's only a very small sign outside. Um, also with respect to uh, Cotters indicating that their sales have been flat, I want to draw your attention to the fact, the comments that I had sent up in my packet last week. If you look at the reviews online, they are very poor. Um, as well as if you were to look physically at their store, they are very understocked and not at all appealing or inviting. I think with this new location being on the main road, like I said, having a clean canvas, getting all new equipment, new product in, um, would be very inviting. And I think that would meet the advantage and the convenience for the customers. Are they related to anyone that owns a liquor store? Uh, no. No. So why, Arlington wrote a very long letter in opposition and then suddenly withdrew their opposition. Do you know why that is? No, um, I don't. I, 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 no, I, I, no. I have no idea. No. And if I may, uh, in regard to uh, Arlington, which is only uh, five about five miles away, uh, they probably employ over, uh, I would say, over 20 people. Uh, they got a, a square footage of at least uh, 12,000 square feet. Uh, from what I, you know, I'm a local guy, and I've uh, been there, and I've seen the amount of business that they generate. And uh, one of the, uh, the biggest things I heard in the town of Pleasant Valley was that, unfortunately, they had to drive five miles because there was uh, not a store that would have at least adequate uh, uh, offerings in this store. If I could also just make a comment also about um, Cotter's stating that there was not room in the town for two. I'd like to draw your attention to um, notes in what I sent up as well at a hearing where I did also represent a protester in Cold Spring for a new liquor store and at that hearing it was stated that my client who was protesting did not have the right to, not to have any competition. I think competition is good, it's healthy, it gives the public the opportunity. Well, we, we, that's not something that we concern ourselves with. The, the, we're not, we don't sit here and say we're not going to put a liquor store there because it's going it's, it's to be competition for another store. That's not a concern of ours. The concern is whether there's demand to support the store because when these stores start failing, they break the law. And that's what we're trying to avoid and whether there actually is a convenience to adding another one for the public. Can you explain what's changed since we denied two stores over the last two year period, also 500 feet away from Cotter's, but on the other direction? There's been a, a slight increase in population. Um, actually, since 1972, when Cotter's first opened, there's been a 62% increase in population in Pleasant Valley. And in Poughkeepsie, since the 1999, when J&B opened, there's been an 11% increase in population in Poughkeepsie. But as I said, a 62% increase in population since 1972, when Cotter's first opened. And they're all, the only liquor store there with that large increase in population. Okay. I don't have any questions, you ready? All right, Tom. Yes. I may vote to deny, given that this board has just approved two other new stores in this very close area in the past two years. I don't see public um, advantage to hope allowing me get another store. And I'm going to deny for the same reasons. I, I, and this is not at all a reflection on the applicant. And it's not a, to, in my mind, it's also not a reflection on whether there could be another store in Pleasant Valley but you are 400 feet away from another store and that is not convenient. That's not adding convenience to anybody in my view. So I'm gonna vote to deny. Thank you.
Thank you. Next time is 2430, Route 82, Zurich, LLC. Uh, what is it, Duchess Liquor Store Day? Duchess mm -hmm. uh, Wine Store. Is it off again? Okay. 2430, 2430 Route 82 Wine Spirits, LLC. Is there no real estate in Dutchess County? They keep <laughs> locations. <laughs> Good morning. And you are? Jessica Glass of Stenger Roberts Davis and Diamond for the applicant Route 82 Wine LLC. Okay, so let me stop you there. Uh, sir, who are you? Uh, Lorenzo Angelino. I'm here in protest uh, for both Shirelles Liquors and Ship Liquor. Okay, you can go first. Go ahead. Um, I uh, appeared on this application in June 27th of 2017, um, the exact same location that they're uh, attempting to place the uh, wine and liquor store again. <clears throat> I uh, submitted uh, all of the background, and I, I don't know if I have to reiterate because really nothing has changed since uh, last summer. Um, the population uh, is similar, has, has remained unchanged. Um, Shirelle's liquor store is 795 feet diagonal across the street from this uh, proposed location. Shiv liquor store is 2.9 miles uh, down Route 82 from the proposed location. Um, there's a number of other liquor stores that I did, I listed within a 5.1 mile radius. Uh, there has been one change since last year uh, that I do note in my uh, letter. Um, the one change was that a, a liquor store that was located, um, it was a Summerlin uh, Wines and Liquors, actually moved to from 4.5 miles away to 6.6 .6 miles away. However, a new liquor store was approved, Vino Bin, on Route 82, which is, again, the same road that this is on, uh, was added, which is 4.05 miles away. I took all the mileages from the uh, Liquor Authority's website. Got it. Um, <coughs> What's the name of that store? Do you know? Vino uh, Bin, V-I-N-O-B-I-N, -O -O Inc. And that was added since our last appearance at 4.05 miles away. Repla repl replacing, replacing another store. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, Summerlin moved, but Summerlin didn't, uh, it moved to 6.6 .6 miles away. So right. that nope. same liquor store just moved a little further. Right. That's okay. right. Vinovin actually replaced um, Eric and Theodore Albert, so it was not an addition of a right. store. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, and... The changes, uh, there, there is, like I said, there's minimal changes to the area, location. There hasn't been any new development since last year. This is diagonal, like I said, across the street from uh, under 800 feet from uh, the uh, Shirelles Liquor Store. Um, Shirelles, and uh, I understand that the, uh, the new location is looking to uh, add wines or be more uh, wine focused, so I did only, get only wine, only wine, and um, so I did get Shirelles and Shiv's Liquors uh, wine inventory. Uh, first off, uh, Shirelles uh, liquor store is has seventy percent of its floor space is wine, uh, or space devoted to wine. They have fifty two varieties of wine. That's not the brands. That's just a variety. Uh, over 750 brands of wine, uh, eight New York State uh, wineries, which there are six varieties each from one of those wineries. Uh, Shiv's Liquor Store, um, they have a 4,000 square foot store. Over 70% of the floor space is devoted to wine. They gave me their, uh, and they're not here today, um, they gave me their, their sales by product and it is 61% of their sales is wine. Um, so 
The other thing is, is that Shirelles was recently approved uh, to also do online uh, sales, website sales, and they're currently building their website to uh, accommodate special orders and wines uh, for the locals uh, to be able to expand uh, their offerings. Um, they haven't completed the website, but it's in construction right now. Okay, thank you. Ms. Glass, go ahead. So the public convenience and advantage would be served by the addition of this store to the uh, proposed premises. Uh, there's a number of reasons why. Uh, first is that my client has, in response to their last application, they have modified their business plan. They are looking now to not sell liquor. They have applied only as a wine license. They are going to focus heavily on unique specialty wines that are not currently available at any of the surrounding stores. Small batch, non-mass -mar market wine um, is going to comprise 80% of their wine portfolio. They're going to be selling wines from lesser known regions such as Cyprus, Georgia, Greece, Hungary, Israel, and Romania. They will have constantly changing inventory. So for example, as new wines are highly ranked, my client will purchase them for their portfolio and will then substitute wines in and out to bring wines that are not generally available to the public in this area um, to the market. They also uh, are going to focus heavily on New York State wines. They're going to have 10% of their portfolio dedicated specifically to New York State produced wine, including lesser New York State varietals. So ones that aren't typically sold will be available at this store. Do you have a list of what you plan to sell? Yeah, we do. Um, so specifically for New York State? Yeah, for, do, I have, do you have a list I can see? For New York State, no, we don't have a, a list right here, but we can, we can provide you with a list. In addition, though, to wines, they are going to be selling cider. So they're going to be devoting 10% of their floor space to the sale of cider, which again would make them extremely unique in comparison to all the surrounding stores, none of which sell cider, except for um, Shirelles has one cider brand, Angry Orchard, that they're currently selling. So in totality, 20% of this floor space is going to be devoted to New York State products because the, it is going to be comprised 10% of New York State wine, 10% roughly of cider that it will be focused heavily on New York State product. Um, so the applicant is currently working with uh, the Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation to make connections to local craft cideries in New York State, and they will be heavily marketing craft cider. Um, cider, as you know, is one of the growing industries in New York. There currently are 83 licensed cideries, um, and the applicant is going to be inviting them to do presentations and tastings at the store. Um, they, in addition, have a dedicated uh, 200 square feet of their location that will be used exclusively for education and tastings. Um, if you look at the diagrams that were provided, you'll see that there is a presentation area. What they're planning on doing, and this again makes them unique uh, amongst the surrounding stores, is they will have wine classes where they will bring educators in to teach different uh, types of wines and to conduct tastings. They're gonna be focused on bringing in wineries from Long Island, the Finger Lakes, and the Hudson Valley to conduct tastings in this location, as well as cideries, which I mentioned. Uh, there's only really one other store in Duchess that heavily focuses on cider sales. So this, again, would be bringing cider in a more accessible way to the public in this area. Um, additionally, if this application is granted, this would only be the second wine license in Duchess County. It'd be one of 65 wine licenses in New York State. So each of these... Why LaGrangeville for them? I mean, they live what amounts to over an hour away. Many people commute. Um, um, just they owned a liquor store in Westchester, they and did. they surrendered it. 
They did. And they have identified this area as a, because of the booming craft market in the Hudson Valley, they think there is a market for their specific products, which are specialty wines. Um, they think that the craft uh, market with respect to cider in the Hudson Valley is obviously booming as well. This is a location in a plaza with a grocery store. So there will be foot traffic from that But I, I guess you're not answering my question. It's I, one of them, I don't remember which one, is the one who applied for the full-on liquor before, correct? Correct. So that was denied. And I would think that if they wanted to do something of that nature, they would find a new building. Now, I'm assuming they don't own that plaza, do you? No. So why LaGrangeville? The proximity to the Taconic um, is one of There's the plenty of other plazas in LaGrangeville. Understood. But this is, the, the landlord here is very committed to bringing a store in and has been willing to work with them to. So what's the relationship with the landlord? There is no personal relationship of any kind. Um, I so think, you've you know, been paying rent at this location since December of 16? No, or rent, you've rent been doesn't commence until. It's contingent, yeah. right? Yep, the lease is contingent? contingent? It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We uh, we went actually through the uh, Hudson Valley Economic uh, Development Corporation's program for wine and liquor, uh, for wine and food uh, uh, businesses in New York. So we uh, that was a couple years ago. Uh, so we grew a lot of connections in that particular area, Hudson Valley, Dutchess. Uh, we always participate uh, at at the uh, wine and beer and uh, liquor summit. Um, so we, uh, we are familiar with the region and uh, that particular plaza has a successful history that uh, uh, there was a liquor, wine and liquor store, uh, but um, primarily it's... Uh, the store that was there before in this room said that they, when they removed from that location, they said they were leaving because the traffic is bad. That's because um, AMP, which was the grocery store in that location, went bankrupt the same year that they applied for removal. Their license was removed from the location the same month that AMP closed. So previously, though, Shirelles and this store, um, LaGrange Wine and Liquor, uh, coexisted for, or, or Shirelles ex coexisted with a liquor store across the street in this plaza for a period of 11 years. If you look at Shirelles' sales data, uh, their accurate sales data from this hearing, which you might remember from the last hearing, uh, their sales data was actually incorrect, um, and I'll focus on that in a second. But if you look at their sales data from that they submitted and you compare it with the timeline for when LaGrange vacated the premises, you'll see that they were unaffected by LaGrange leaving. What happened from um, 2014 to 2015, while well, Shirelles still had LaGrange across the street as a com competitor, they had growth of $100,000 in sales from the prior year. In 2016, when LaGrange was gone, there was an additional $100,000 in growth, which was consistent with prior year's growth year after year. But then the next year it only went up 20. 25, yes. So that to me doesn't indicate that there's, that's not going to, that, that 125,000 is not going to support another store. It's this different store with different products. And if you also look at the Shirelles sales data um, that you denied the original application on last year, uh, the Shirelles told us at that hearing that they were only selling um, between 81, I'm sorry, $84,000 and $181,000 in gross sales. We, at this exact same time, they were telling that to the authority here um, at this protest hearing, they were actually advertising their business as making over a million dollars in sales, gross sales a year. They were subject to an enforcement proceeding as a result of that. It was a material basis on which this application was denied. Um, they are doing presently over a million dollars worth of sales. Okay. Mr. Angelino, can I ask you a question again? Um, yes. Do your clients sell any craft cider? Uh, yes, there is uh, there's yeah, cider available. Yeah. And um, Your Honor, uh, just so you're aware, there was a change in ownership yes, since in August. Uh, the last, and um, for Shirelles. Uh, um, he is now the sole corporate principal. He's brand new. He's yeah, the only he's one. Very new. His plan is to expand and modernize the uh, the liquor store. That's why he also, when he requested his uh, this change in ownership be approved, he did add the the online presence. Uh, he intends to expand the New York State 
uh, uh, New York State wine presence and um, his craft beverage uh, or craft cider presence. Um, he's brand, uh, like I said, this was just recently approved. And, uh, and I have taken the photo of him alone on this. And well, he's just, uh, he's saying he's taken out significant loans to upgrade the store and bring it, uh, modernize it too. And you mentioned that they had 50 to 60 wine varieties? Varieties. It's varieties, like kinds. He, he gave me a breakdown. And how many of those are New York State products, roughly? He, roughly, well, it'd be each, each winery that he has, which is, uh, he has eight New York State wineries. Each of those wineries, he carries uh, six varieties each. So, so when we're saying varieties, I'm sorry, something. just just to clarify, um, the varieties are the types of wines. Like I understand. Yeah. So, so about fifteen percent. Yeah. Roughly. Current, currently, this is how he inherited, uh, well, not inherited, but purchased the uh, the liquor store. And do you have any information about your other client? Or it's not um, so clear. He, uh, he just gave me his overall sales. Uh, like I said, his overall sales were sixty-one percent of his overall sales is wine, okay. and seventy percent of his floor space is wine. Uh, we okay, thank um, you. It, it actually, uh, based on a visit to the stores, to Shiv and Shirelles, um, floor space appeared to be equally split, 50-50, wine and liquor. Um, there was a virtually non-existent, uh, non-existent selection that we saw visually um, of New York State wine. Um, there was only one brand of cider currently being carried. It's Angry Orchard, which is a mass market, um, not really a craft focus, which is what we intend on providing. Uh, Shiv. Um, there was a minimal New York State wine section, about 1% of the store, uh, no cider, and 50% liquor. Um, Cheers, which is another local store, uh, no cider, 50% liquor. And that's consistent, really, with all of these liquor stores that are in this area. We're looking to do a completely different customer experience from an educational perspective and from the types of products being offered. One of the things that makes this applicant very unique is that they have a constantly changing inventory as well. It's not static. They, as wines become new, newly rated, highly ranked, they're purchased. They could be purchased in even one or two cases um, at a time because that's all that might be available for purchase uh, because of how small batch these are. So it's really looking to be a specialty wine store as opposed to uh, a mass market liquor store model, which is what all of the surrounding stores are. No, I, 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 what percentage of your products will be craft cider? We're going to have 10% um, craft cider, uh, with it majority being from New York, and 10% of the entire wine portfolio, which is going to be making up the majority of the store, is going to be New York State produced wine. 80% of the wine is going to be non-mass market, small batch wine that is, is just not publicly available. I'm ready. And uh, with regard to why Dutchess, again, uh, we, yes, we live closer to New York City, but New York City is very saturated inside there, uh, retailers and producers. Uh, Dutchess actually is very underserved inside there. And uh, Hopeful Junction is the location of one of uh, very good cider producers. So we know uh, from HVDC experience that cider producers really struggle to get retailers' support outside New York City. So that's as far as we can go um, north, but uh, that's really the heart. It's close to the Culinary Institute. It's close to Hudson Valley. And, uh, so I'm going to ask what the chairman asked again, like what's your relationship actually to the town that you're having your store? Like do you summer up there? Like do you have family up there? Like is no, there a we reason? Don't, we don't have family up there, uh, but it, it is a location that is currently underserved. We are business people and we, we want to open a location right here. There is, there is an opportunity and we're looking to take it. It's, it's just a 55 minute drive from our house. We commute, like people commute one hour and 30 minutes to get to Manhattan every day. So I don't believe the commute is the issue. It's, it's an area with an obvious business opportunity and we want to take it. So you will have managers? Yes. Well, you're yeah. also going to be. Yeah. Yes, yes I, 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 am, I, I will be an active manager. 
Uh, we, uh, we always, uh, in the past, we employed sommelier managers who were uh, culinary institute graduates. Uh, when we originally applied, we did not <laughs> anticipate uh, denial, so we had uh, culinary institute sommelier uh, lined up for employment. That, that's another point, is that they are going to be engaging a sommelier to, from the culinary to help curate their wine selection uh, and to also do presentations. So uh, their store, their historic uh, understanding of stores of this type is that stores of this type actually become destination stores um, where people will come from other areas because of the unique products that are being sold. So this actually could be a benefit to this community in other ways as well, such as drawing additional traffic that would not be present in this plaza and in this vicinity to the other businesses. Do any of the relatives own liquor stores? No. Did you, did you, uh, before you surrendered the license in Westchester, did you do a corporate change and take her off it? Uh, he wasn't no, no, on it. it. Was, Raul was not on it. I was not on it. This is, this was a brand new entity. So we, let me explain. No, I'm not. Who was, who, who owned the license in Westchester, in White Plains? Natasha. Both of us. Okay. Both of us. But That's she applied for this the first time. You didn't surrender that until January and, and that previous application was filed before that. So was there a change made before she filed that application? Um, we, we actually did not file any change. We, we, we were well aware that we were, we were moving out of that location. And we, we, we made it very clear to the liquor authority that we are applying. Okay, I don't, you could have. I don't remember. Okay. So you, we, we knew she was part of that but was going to leave it. Okay. Most definitely, yes. All right. You ready to vote? And I am, unless she's... May, may I? Sure. May I add one thing? We also have um, an excellent letter of support from uh, Professor Atsuni, who's very well uh, entrenched in the wine industry, Professor Russell Zamanka. And we also have a letter of support from ShopRite, which believes that adding a wine store to the, to the plaza is going to uh, help. Those were submitted along with the original application. Yeah. Commissioner Fan, I'm going to vote to approve given the revised business plan. I see public convenience serve. Um, if you're focusing on uh, New York produced craft cider <coughs> and um, showing support for the New York State wine industry, I'm going to vote to deny. I, I, we denied it as a liquor store because of lack of public convenience and advantage. And I think there's less public convenience and advantage to just having a wine store. Um, I don't think anything's changed since we denied it last time. And you know, part of the reason is this is a rural community. And we just opened the second closest store in 2016. And we don't really have strong numbers yet on what their history is going to be as far as their sales numbers. So I'm not saying down the road that it's not possible to put one in there. but. I'm not prepared, given the previous denial, to put another one there now. May I speak just, though, to the Hudson Valley Wine and Spirits, which is the one that you just referred to as new? Everyone comes in here. Oh, go ahead, yeah, to okay, that store. So Hudson Valley Wine and Spirits, which it was the one of the other bases of the denial, other than proximity to Shirelles at the last hearing, was uh, the fact that Hudson Valley Wine and Spirits did not have sales data yet. Um, they have now produced sales data. They have no, when I say sales data, I want to see three or four years of sales data. Understood. Right now we have a year and a half. Understood. But one of the things that Hudson Valley Wine Spirits said in their hearing in front of this authority as to the when questioned about their own proximity to Shirelles is that the Taconic State Parkway is a divider between Hudson Valley Wine and Spirits location and Shirelles mm -hmm. location. And people do not cross the parkway to shop. Um, so they use that as the specific reason why that, that market that they were looking to go into was not necessarily competitive or served by Shirelle's store. So to deny based on that. Oh, I, yeah. People come in here and say stuff to me all the time. It doesn't mean I believe it all. And that may not be the reason that I granted it. I mean, that, that mm -hmm. comes in. Everyone comes in here and tells me they're going to they're gonna focus on New York wines. I guarantee you if I sent my investigators out, I'd find out nobody is because the numbers aren't going up on the sales of the New York wines. If, if your stores are sh chock full of New York wines, they'd be selling them because there'd be no other wines in there, and that's not what's happening. So, you know, I, I listen to everybody. It doesn't mean I accept everything. And my clients genuinely are focusing on craft markets. I'm not saying anybody intends 
to not do what sure. they say they're going to do. That's understandable. But, but life changes, as we, we have all know. Members have voted. Not, we need to not, not uh, everyone went uh, through an actual program and uh, uh, consulted with uh, state university. And uh, I mean, there would be no reason for us two years ago to go. I, I understand program. that. I'm not. You're not. You're very good applicants. It's just the location which we've already denied once, and and I'm not prepared. I, and I was the one who denied it. I'm not prepared to grant it now because you went and and are going to sell wines. We voted. I'm sorry. The, the case is over. Can, can I uh, we, we have a room full of pe people, please. Uh, the next item in Albany, 2414, Island Spirits, LLC. Hello, my name is Tim Fredapp from Island Spirits. I'll accept. I'll accept. Did you want to say something? Yes, sir. I was just, I come here today just to, uh, I know it's my second offense and it's a $6,000 civil penalty. I was just hoping maybe we put some precautions, uh, procedures into place. And now I was hoping maybe to get a deduction on the penalty if possible. But just from here on out, we put procedures into place. Anybody that works the register has to do the uh, alcohol awareness training program. And now our computer system, anybody that rings a bottle out, it automatically prompts for an ID. So you can't go any farther unless you have an ID to scan out, for this will never happen again. Well, did you know your, 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 your employee asked for the ID here and they said they didn't have it, so she asked for a birth date and, to, and accepted that? Yes, sir. She was automatically terminated because we know. I'm not, I'm not insinuating she should have been, but my point is you can have all the procedures in the world. If they're not going to follow them, it's, it doesn't mean yes, anything. Sir. And you yes, sir. No, I understand. There was a reduction on the last one. What was the reduction to? Because the, the person who made the sale had actually had ATAP training beforehand and still made the sale. But yeah, you got $1,000 on the last one. It should have been three. Right, sir. I'll give you, I'll give you 5000 5000 Good. 5000 Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a All great right. day. Thank you. All right. I've got nothing You're else welcome. in Albany. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, we're going to move on to New York then. The first item, 2394, Lexicon Maman, LLC. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. Stacy Weiss for the applicant. Lexicon, Lexicon Maman. Maman LLC, uh, located at 7 Oscarwana Lake Road in Lake Peekskill, New York. This is the principal, Lajan Jose. So this is a going to be a 700 square foot store located in the hamlet of Lake Peekskill. Uh, it's going to be a, a smaller store than the four closest stores, which are all located in Westchester County. Uh, Mr. We, Jose, is it, hold on, I'm sorry. Is there any opposition here for this? Okay, uh, go ahead. Mr. Jose's store is located in uh, Putnam County. His is the only store in Put his, his store is the only store in, in Putnam, uh, as opposed to the other stores which are in Westchester County. As a matter of fact, there was a store located uh, about 10 feet away from his store for about nine years. Uh, it closed down uh, in 2014. Uh, so he's kind of replacing that store that was there. Uh, there was a, um, there's also located across the street from him a fairly large uh, supermarket which will act as an anchor store. The uh, four, uh, there's been a population increase in the area. And uh, as a matter of fact, there are no, uh, uh, the closest store north to him is about seven miles away. So he's going to service. Um, uh, a large area north of him, and uh, there are small hamlets uh, in that area that he's going to service. He's going to be a, a, a really a mom and pop store in that area. And uh, there are any other questions? If there are any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. I'm sorry if I'm talking a little funny. Um, I have no, a you're little not. Issue. Why a liquor store? Good afternoon, I'm Lajan. Um, liquor store, 
Uh, one reason is location, and the second reason is timing. I have um, three children going to school, so I can send them to school and come back and uh, open the store at like 9.30. Um, my you wife, don't run any of your a, uh, grocery store stores? Uh, th that one I uh, go uh, afternoons uh, every day. You have three, right? Oh, no, two. I'm two. sorry, two. Yes. Um, he do, he does the do you manage those as well? Yes, I do in the afternoon, yeah. but uh, I have a... Um, well, how do you do that in the afternoon? You told us on your application you're going to work in the liquor store from 1 to 9. Right. That um, is the afternoon. From um, the timing is, uh, no, I can I can only uh, work in the morning, uh, from uh, opening till two thirty. Nine to two thirty. Yeah. Well, he, he, he rearranged how he's going to do. He's from opening to afternoon two thirty. Right? Yes, morning. Yes. Um, afternoon, um, I will be um, uh, going there to close the store, uh, but meantime I will be. Uh, you know, looking after the other store. He, he's, he's a little nervous. We discussed it yesterday. How, how he's going to do it is in the mornings, he's going to drop his children off at school. He's going to open the store after he drops his children off at school. And then he's going to be there till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Then he has managers at the other location, uh, at, at, his, uh, at his gas stations, at the, uh, at the stores. They're going to manage until then. Then he's going to go to the gas stations. They're all located very close to each other. He lives up there. He's 10 minutes away from all the stores. He's going to visit the stores, manage those, and then he's going to be at the uh, at go to, at the tail end of the liquor store, go there, make sure everything is is fine there, close up there at night. So he'll be at all the stores each day, make sure everything is all good at all the stores. He'll have a manager at the liquor store also. Are you aware that we licensed a store within two miles of this place in October of this year? Well, it was that place was licensed already. It, it had a license previously. That was relicensed. It was a sale. So you're not, but you indicated you're replacing somebody. I don't see. Oh, it, well. Was it, that a sale, Jack? No, the, you approved it. It was. It's I don't sale. remember it being a sale either. Uh, the, all the stores, all the stores were previously there. Um, which the store you're talking? The store. Uh, it's there. I, I'll tell you which. Uh, store. It's Yorktown Discount Liquors. We we Yorktown approved it. Discount, we approved yes. it in May of 2018, and it and it got issued in October of this year. Uh, Yorktown uh, was previously uh, got licensed in 2016. Portland. So the, the Portland had Plaza, expired, I believe. So it hadn't so been licensed in two years. And then we and licensed it again. Licensed. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of them were previously licensed. And um, as a matter of fact, the store we're talking about here was the one that was licensed. Uh, let's see. Uh, what? Nine Oscawana Lake was a liquor yeah, store before. Yeah, Oscawana Lake. Uh, yeah, nine, nine Oscawana Lake Road from 2005 to 2014, serial number 2129806. What are you, ta what are you talking about? Oh, the one that was near him. Wait, uh, I'm talking about 1761 East Main Street, Mohegan Lake. Right, that was previously licensed, right. In, in 2016, it closed, though, and we, re we just relicensed it. Were you, I'm asking if you're aware of that. Yeah, yes, I, I, I'm aware of it. Uh, right. Right, yes, sir, I, I am aware of it. Um, it's, yeah. All right. I, I, do you have any questions? No. All right. Ready to vote? Yes. But Mr. Fan. I'm going to vote to approve the closest stores uh, two, more than two miles away. I see from your map that there are just a lot of vacancies in that corner, so I think having a store there is better than four vacant buildings. So I vote to approve. I'll vote to approve as well. It's a small store. The closest store is. I thank you so much. I appreciate. Well, I'm not done yet. The closest store is 2.6 miles away. <laughs> and this is a and uh, while that's been open since 2015, the other the other three closest stores all show increase in sales. The closest store we don't really have numbers on yet, but um, in the year and a half that we do have, they have shown an increase as well. So I'll, I'll vote to approve. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. Thank you. Thank All right. You. The next item, 2379, Alik 1037, Inc. Uh, 
The applicant is not here on this one. The applicant contacted me the end of last week and wanted an adjournment until February because of a failing merger. This one I discussed with you, Chairman. I agree. Yeah. And I said we weren't going to we weren't going to hold over that long. I vote to deny. Yeah. Well, yesterday he he asked for an, an adjournment until the nineteenth. Of what? Of this month. But that was just yesterday, so I didn't. I told me you would have to. I would pass on his request to the members. Are they all your clients? Yes. You're rep I'm saying you're representing all of them. Uh, See, I'm not worried about inconveniencing you. You're here every week. No, I. But I'm not going to inconvenience them. So they can put their name on the record and come back if they want to. Uh, I'm not going to listen to you today. They can put their name on the record and come back if they want to, but they don't need to since you're going to be here for them. And they, they can watch will, it on TV. They will, Chairman, they will come back. They don't need to, but it's up to them. No, it's, it's All right, so put their name on the record. Okay. You put your store and your name on the record. The store name is uh, Embassy Liquors, and my name is Patrick Desai. Come on. Keep coming. Don't be shy. Uh, Embassy Liquors, Katusha Phillips. Okay. I Corp Wines, Michael Choi. Okay, and the first one was who? I Corp. Embassy. Embassy. Oh, they're both from Embassy. Okay, all right. So I'm, we'll adjourn this to the next meeting, but after that, it, yeah, there's no more adjourn. There's no more um, adjournments after that, so if he's calling for another one, tell him it's going to get denied. Okay. The next item, 2378. Chaotical Ka LLC. Coming up. Good afternoon. My name is Benjamin Corngut. I'm appearing on behalf of the applicant, Catico LLC, DBA Forest Wines, uh, operating at 6838 Forest Avenue. Uh, I believe there's opposition. So yes. Yep. A chance to speak. Charles Lynn in opposition. I'm the attorney for High Wine and Liquor Corp at 59-03, 71st Avenue in Ridgewood, the second closest store to the above re referenced applicant, uh, stating that public convenience advantage will not be served by licensing this applicant. As far as proximity, there are seven stores within the Ridgewood area of Queens. Of those seven stores, the four closest are about 0.2 and 0.3 miles or less from applicant, Myra Wine, 663 feet, high my clients, 816 feet, and Two Guys Wine and Liquor, 1,154 feet, and Frost Liquor House, 1,713 feet. Uh, I have an area survey and a listing of the stores as Exhibit 1. As far is as that, is that back to as the eagle flies, or is that? Uh, it's either the eagle or the crow. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Jackie, our numbers are the driving distances. Driving distance. I think that's what it's list listed there. Yes, our driving distance. Okay. So Myra is what one block away. Myra is one block away. Regardless, it's right down the road. Is it the and same? Is it? It's one walking block, or one is walk, two? One and a half walking blocks. One and a half. Walking blocks. And high is two and a half walking blocks, different direction. I understand. Okay, go ahead. Um, as far as gross sales are concerned, three of the four closest stores uh, show the last two to three years of decreasing sales, and they're not just decreasing sales, they're de significant decreasing sales. I've attached that as my Exhibit 2. The fourth store, Forest Liquors, uh, has incomplete figures because it was just licensed in August 2016. As far as population and demographics for the period 2010 to 2016, zip code 11385 shows an increase of 1.5% to 5% of total population growth. 
I had to put both in because I had an inconsistency on one set of figures with another, so I figured rather than just rely on one, I would set forth what both those figures were. The, uh, the uh, actual population is just a little bit less, less than 100,000. Again, it differentiates between the two formal estimates, and I put that as my Exhibit 3. However, the population density shows it has significantly less population density than most zip codes in the area. Ridgewood covers a 3.6 mile uh, land area. There doesn't appear to be any substantial residential or commercial construction in the area. Block after block are lined with properties, predominantly two, three, and six family townhouses. With seven stores in close proximity to applicant, and the applicant only having a space of 350 square feet, including rental and storage, it would not appear that applicant will be supplying any new products or new services that the current stores do not already supply to this community. And I wasn't able to gather from the application whether it would be a boutique store or not, but I would like to emphasize the fact that Myra, the one that's just 663 feet away, is itself a store that's only 300 square feet itself. So it, it too is almost, almost a boutique store. Well, so to answer your question, it's uh, focus on natural wines. So I guess that would be boutique. Yes, but Myra also is a very small boutique store. Do you sell any natural wines? Uh, yes, uh, they, I, uh, they, the high wines and liquors sells organic. Um, they call them esoteric wines. In addition to that, they're just having now a reshuffling of the inside of the store to uh, increase the number of wines that are being uh, sold by the store. They run 60-40 liquor. And they they are in the process now of reducing sixty forty liquor meaning sixty had sixty liquor forty wine okay but they are, have changed uh, their format they're not ready yet but the work is in progress in the store and they were going to a six reversing that to a sixty forty wine even before this application is natural wine and organic wine the same thing I don't know she'll be able to tell us sure maybe here's the manager let me, let him explain what what product uh, split they have hi, hi. Uh, we have a large selection of biodynamic and organic which we uh, basically introduced in the last year and a half two years uh, there are many wines that we bought that are new so what percentage would you say is organic about 30 percent 30 percent of your wines are organic yep okay and what's your, and you're all wine? No, you're not all wine. No, no. no what's no. your split? Right now is about 50-50. Okay. Counting what I have in the basement, it is not on the floor yet. It would be 60 wine and 40 liquor. Okay. Thank Any, you. Anything else, Mr. Lynn? That's the first time you've ever asked me how many. <laughs> that was the shortest presentation you ever gave. Maybe that's why. Thank you. I just want to introduce the principal of the applicant, uh, Marie Triboulois. Uh, as you know, this is an application for an off-premises wine store in the Ridgewood neighborhood in Queens. We strongly feel that the issuance of this license will be in the public convenience and advantage. The store will be very small. It will be approximately 350 square feet. And perhaps most importantly, as the chairman said, 100% uh, of the inventory will be natural wines. And Ms. Uh, Trubulwa can expound on what exactly that means in a moment. Uh, as I'm sure you know, in recent years, customer tastes have changed and people are more conscious of what they're eating and drinking. They want wine grown naturally without chemical additives and other processes. Uh, Ms. Trubulwa is an expert in natural wines. Um, she is a partner in a restaurant that's nearby called Ops, where she has built up a cult following amongst natural wine lovers. Um, attached to Exhibit 1 are some press clippings about Ops. Uh, it has become a destination for natural wine lovers throughout the city. People come from all over the city, uh, mainly because of their wine selection. And many of her customers at the store have expressed their frustration in their inability to get the types of wines that she serves in the restaurant for off-premises consumption at home. Uh, How close is the restaurant to this location? Well, that's what I was going to say. The restaurant's in Brooklyn, isn't it? Uh, about 15 minutes walk. It is in Brooklyn, but a 15-minute walk. It's 
Rich, you cross the bridge? Right. The border, so it's very close to okay. It's right across the border. Um, and she plans to bring that expertise in selecting wines to the off-premises store. Uh, regarding the four closest stores, that we're aware of none serve any selection of natural wines, which are worth noting. Um, on a recent visit to High Wine and Liquor Corp, uh, we counted approximately five natural wines in a 3,800 square foot store. So this is a huge store. And currently, their selection of natural wines is, is minimal at best. As far as we know, the four other closest stores don't serve any natural wines. Uh, Miram Wine and Liquor is a small store, approximately 300 square feet. Uh, Two Guys Wine and Liquor and Liquor Corp and Forest Liquor House uh, sort of offer no natural wine that we're aware of. Are um, you doing online sales? Not initially, no. no. Delivery? I'll see how business goes. I'm not planning on it, but it's a possibility. And you're working, it says you're going to be at the store three days a week. Who's going to be there the other four? At first, I'm planning on being there every day. Um, as I'm getting the business off the ground, I would like to have one other person working there full time and me just overseeing the orders and the inventory. And you work, and you currently work at the restaurant. I do, yeah. And you're so you're going to continue to do that as well. Well, it's my husband and I opened the restaurant, and it's always been more of my husband's project. So I can, I will still have a little saying in in the business, but I won't be running it every day anymore. Uh, regarding the, the four closest stores, uh, our contention is that this store won't be in competition with the four closest stores, but rather will supplement uh, their existing selection. If a customer wants to buy any liquor or non-natural wines, they will continue to go to the same stores that they have been going to. Uh, and in addition to serving the needs of the Ridgewood <coughs> and Bushwick communities, uh, the intention is that this store would be a destination for natural wine lovers throughout the city. We acknowledge that uh, three of the four, that the sales at three of the four closest stores have either been flat or falling, um, but we believe this should not be happening as the population of Ridgewood has been growing. Uh, there's a train station, the Myrtle Wyckoff Avenue subway station, which is the closest train station that services both the M and the L line, that shows significant increase in ridership, 11.8 percent from 2016 to 2017 and 29 percent from 2012 to 2017. And I'm sure, as you know, in the future, uh, the L train will be shutting down. So the M, the M train stations, which are actually closer to the store, will see probably a dramatic increase in ridership in the, in the coming or, years. Or, or you'll see a decrease in population, because I don't know that anyone knows when it's going to go back up again. I, I believe it's two years, but. Uh, yeah. 18 months. Um, Ms. Tribula lives in the area, and she can attest to this, but there is, contrary to what the opposition has raised, there is substantial development in the area. We, I've submitted pictures of, and a map of all the buildings go up in the, in the area, but there are uh, buildings going up everywhere. Mm -hmm. And just by an informal count, we count 250 new residential units in the immediate vicinity. The combination of flat or falling sales and the rising population in the area leads us to believe that the stores in the area failed to adjust to the changing customer needs and that the issuance of this license will, serve, will fill a huge void in the market and serve the public convenience and advantage. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Marie just to give some background on her experience in the natural wine field and in the industry. Hello. Hi. Um, I've been working mostly in the restaurant industry for the past 15 years, both in France and then in New York since I've been living here. I've been here for about 12 years. I've always been focusing on quality over quantity, and I've been part of this community of people, both winemakers and sellers, that are focusing on serving wines that are, uh, to answer your question, organic wines are just a part of natural wines. You can make wines that are natural but not necessarily organic because an organic is just a label. Um, it's very hard to get data on what is used in wines nowadays because it's not required to be on the label. So I've developed relationships with a lot of importers and winemakers who are very transparent. It's very hard to find those wines here. People have been asking and I live, again, it's, um, he said it earlier, but I live a couple of blocks away. I walk to work. The people who come to my restaurant also live around that area. So I know the people that I would like to sell to. And I go to all of these places. Um, 
Hai has a great selection of liquor. There are very few, I can't really drink sulfites, which makes it even you know more restrained, but there are very few wines there that I can drink. Um, it's, I'm not an insulated case, I represent that demographic, and I really love the neighborhood, and I think that there's a need. Um, for me, it's important to have a small alternative. It's gonna be just me in the store. I'm gonna have less than 100. And where references. are you sourcing the natural wines from mostly? Um, I work with about f 10 importers now that are focusing only on natural wines. Five that we've been like mostly buying from at the restaurant that I have really great relationships with. Um, I what countries are there? That's France, Italy, Georgia, Greece, and the United States. We would love to say that we know we're going to serve. Is there such a thing as New York State? There's there's a few. There's Natural there's wines. three that I know of that I really like. I would like to sell more overall U.S. wines that have been made naturally. There's a lot more in Oregon than in California than here. Um, it's coming though. It's happening. There's one in Virginia that just started. Um, there is more and more of an interest because it does make a difference. I mean, it is the stuff that you find in wines right now is actually pretty frightening when you start looking into it. So. Again, I just think that the alternative is important, especially in a city that regroups people who want an alternative in general. That makes sense. Okay. The Chairman Juan is, is a sommelier, so I'd like him to be able to tell you what he does within the store uh, with regards to the sale of wines. Okay. Uh, first of all, we have definitely more than five uh, wines that are natural. Using New York State, I have Bloomer Creek and Weimer, which are both natural, and that's used New York State. Um, I've been working in restaurants and retail for the last 10 years. Um, beverage director at Mitchell in Star Restaurants, as well as being the best young sommelier of uh, the Northeast of the United States. And Is that a competition? or no. Uh, it means like the selection that I have been bringing to the store lately has has been way different from what they had before. And we are changing to a more natural way as well. That's why it would be uh, direct heat to the store, uh, new style to to approve a store that has only natural wine two blocks away from us. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, you ready? Did you vote? Yeah. Commissioner Fan. I think probably New York City can um, accommodate two experts in this area. Um, I see this as an expansion of your existing business. Um, it seems to me like a natural development, so it's a very small store. I'm going to vote to approve. I'm going to vote to approve as well, given the specialized nature of the store and the small size of the store. Um, if I'm still here, I wouldn't come back and ask for full liquor because it's not happening. Uh, at least if it's just she and I up here. Um, Quality restrictions or the type of wine? I don't know that we can that? restrict it to natural wines because I don't know how we would even enforce that. Okay. Um, but I'm taking her at a word that that's what it's going to be focused on. And uh, like Commissioner Fan said, I think that it is a natural extension of your restaurant. So good luck. Uh, the next item is 2429, Chiv and Sweat, Inc. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Rakesh. Uh, I am in a business for the last 15 years in uh, New Rochelle. Right, hold on just for a second. We have... This is the applicant. I know. Yeah. Um, you put, he put his name, you put your name on the record? Yes. Okay, these are, I'm assuming, are all opposition, so you're, can you, you can take a seat and they get to go first. Okay. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Andrew Park. I'm here to represent uh, Spring Valley Wine and Spirit Corp in opposition. Um, Spring Valley is uh, located within uh, Rockland County occupies about two square miles. Uh, the most recent uh, census 
uh, information available from, from 2017 shows that uh, there's a general population of 32,415 people, which is a 4.4% increase from 2010, uh, or 1,377 people in total. Um, of the total population, 26.4% of, of the people, the residents of Spring Valley, are below the poverty line. Um, the median age uh, in this community is 29.9 years of age, uh, of, the, of which 42.8% of the population is below the age of 18. Um, the applicant, Shiv and Sweat, is applying for a liquor license uh, in an area where there are already seven existing liquor stores within a mile and a half from the proposed location. And that's based on information available on the State Liquor Authority's proximity report. Um, Mr. Park, uh, who are your clients? Uh, one. Spring Valley Wine. Last one. Okay. Which and is, who else is here? I, I believe I have the owner of DJ Liquor Corp is here. And they're not representing them? No. No, yeah, they're going to get to go. Right. Okay. And then also the owner of Yarmay Trading is also here. And we'll get them later. Go, yeah, continue. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks. Um, so, um, again, you're talking about seven stores within two square miles. Um, in considering whether or not public convenience and advantage will be served, I request the commissioners to consider the size of the existing stores in comparison to the proposed applicant and the gross sales of the closest stores. Two of the closest stores, DJ Liquor Corp and Spring Valley Wine and Spirit Corp, have shown declining sales over the past four years. One of the other stores, Yarmay Trading, recently, uh, recently just purchased uh, and was licensed. Um, should also note that Wegmans, uh, which is, even though they're located in New Jersey, is about a mile away from Yarmay, and about two miles away from... Um, well, that, that, what's in Jersey is, okay. believe me, I have enough to concern myself with in New York. I'm not worrying about okay. New Jersey. I just wanted to point out that it's a 5,000 square foot store. Um, I think the biggest factor is that uh, to consider is that DJ Liquor uh, and Spring Valley have both shown declining sales over the past four years. Uh, the stores range in size from from anywhere from a thousand square feet to the largest being three thousand square feet, which is my client store. Um, I'd like to point out that uh, in in support of our opposition, uh, we have two letters. One from uh, Assemblywoman Ellen, uh, Ellen C. Jaffe and one from Rockland County Legislator a Amy Paul, who both express uh, concern over the numbers of liquor stores already licensed and the potential negative economic impact a new license may cause to the existing businesses. I believe uh, there were other, uh, there were citizens of uh, Spring Valley that also submitted petitions in opposition uh, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the, uh, the new application. No, we didn't get that. I have that here. Oh, no, we're not taking them because they didn't get them. Tom, did they try to put, oh, we did get them? I don't have them. That's what you're talking about. Oh, no, I do have them. I'm sorry. You're right. Forget it. Okay. <laughs> uh, lastly, I, I'd like to point out that uh, within the past three years, uh, there were two applications that were submitted that were also den uh, denied. Um, one of the stores, uh, which was about three years ago, as I believe, was um, Winchester Wines. They were looking to open up uh, one of those mega discount stores, about 30,000 square feet, uh, which you considered um, to not be of any uh, public advantage or convenience. And then most recently, last year, there was a smaller store uh, located the, to be located on Main Street, which was only 500 square feet. And again, that was denied because uh, there was no proof that they, were, they would provide any uh, public advantage or convenience. Um, with that in mind, we, uh, we strongly uh, request that you deny the uh, requested application. Thank you. Uh, Assembly Member Jaffe represents this, the district that covers this area, or is she writing because she's chair of um, children and families? She, she does. She's your, mem she's your Assembly Member. Right. And can you comment on how close that high school is? I, I don't have the exact figure, but uh, if you see them, if there's uh, the aerial map, I, I would say it's, it's maybe a block or two away. Okay. All right, guys, everybody up at once, tell us what you need to say. Can you all get in line behind him, please? Okay, so my name is James. I'm the, I have the DJ Liquor Corp. Uh, 
Around nine years before we start, I started the business because I lost the job. I was in Pfizer because I'm, the reason I'm saying uh, there is not that much population in that area. Pfizer was the biggest employer there and they closed down. I was working for Pfizer for 22 years in the research as a research scientist. So I lost the job, That's the, after that I started the business. But you can see the business is going down and the rent is going up. The population is not increasing. Some, now some community is moving to there. I want to mention the name, but they have their own liquor source. They are poor, they don't, majority of that population, yeah, because the Jewish people, they don't drink. Plus, if they drink, they have their own community, their own liquor source. So I have a big family. My three kids are in the college here. My son also here. We, me, my wife, my three kids are working there. We don't have no other income. I lose my job also. So please don't approve that. All right, thank you. Thanks. I'm just, <clears throat> my name is Deepu James. I'm just reiterating what he said. I, st I What store? DJ Liquor. Oh, okay. Oh, you're, you gotta be quick, because we okay, just yeah, listened okay, to your father. <laughs> Because I work there full time now, I just stopped going to college. I basically graduated, but I have one more semester left. And I've been working there full time is an understatement. And we, like I, whatever people ask me to bring in, we bring in. And it's just, it's, you can't peak a certain amount of revenue. So if a new store opening down, right down the street, they're not making anything new. There's no new business. You're splitting, you're right. pulling a community. And then it's a race to who, closes down. All right. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Zisha Muller. Um, I'm the son of the owner from uh, Yarmer Trading. He broke his ankle a couple of weeks ago, he couldn't come here. What's the name of your store? Um, the, the, the corporation is Yarmer Trading. What's the address? 811 Chestnut Ridge Road. How far are you from this location he's moving to? 1.6 miles. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, my father b bought off the store. He got this, uh, his uh, license recently. Um, he bought it off, the, the owner prior from him bought the store off for $180,000. And his, in 2015, his most sales per year was $160,000. And uh, his sales wa were declining every year. And my father bought off the store for a small fraction of what he paid. Uh, three years ago for it. Okay, thank you. Oh, my name is, hello? My name is Dean Lautig. Can you talk into the microphone and louder? Yeah, my name is Dean Lautig. I'm, I'm, I'm a neighbor from, uh, from the liquor store, not too far from me. You're a what? I'm the neighbor of him. You're the neighbor of who? Oh, you're his neighbor. Yeah. Okay. He don't live. The who the store. Okay. Yeah, he don't live. He's, I'm not living f too far from that liquor store, but I don't want to see no need to have a liquor store in this town. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming. My name is Cyprian uh, Lynch. Uh, I've been living in Spring Valley for like uh, almost 30, 30 years. But I know there's a lot of liquor store already there. So I, I don't think it's a good idea to bring another one because they're very close already. There's about eight liquor stores. Uh, Spring Valley is very small. There's no business there, any store. I witness, sometimes I go there to stay with them. The business is very slow. So now there's no reason to bring another store there. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, let's go, applicant. Again, my name is uh, Rakesh Patel, and uh, I had an existing liquor store in uh, New Rochelle. Uh, the reason I had to move is my landlord is restructuring the building, and he gave me a deadline, which is already uh, September 2018. So I have to move somewhere, and I live in uh, Rockland County. 
and I was searching for the location, I make sure that I follow all the SLA guidelines, which should be not in 500 meters of anyone, which should be not uh, competition to anyone or nearest church should be close by. And when I found this location, I went personally there and sat there for one month and look at the traffic. Yes, East Ramapo is growing. It's not only Spring Valley, but there is a Ramapo. So the area is growing like a second in uh, New York State. And the traffic is there, it's constantly more. And I live like two miles from, uh, from the location. Uh, the, another thing, I don't want to take anybody's bread, but if I don't move somewhere closer, I also need a bread. And I don't want to be a competition or anything like that. It will be a small store, like 700 square feet of the store. And I just want to have my living there. And uh, second thing, like uh, the nearest liquor store, which is a uh, 1.9 uh, mile, which is a Spring Valley. Um, I'm not even near to the competition with them because uh, they've, they've been there for a long time. And I personally know the area. So basically, at this point, I have to move out somewhere. And I checked in uh, my New Rochelle. There are like from five store to now it's 11 store in last three years. And last three is in my competition right on my street, like less than a mile radius. If you look into the route one. So that's the only reason I want to move back out from that area to this new location. So the only reason you're moving to Rockland is because you live in Rockland, not other than the landlord, I mean, but you picked Rockland. I mean, you're moving 33 miles to I the store. I live in Rockland. It's because you live in Rockland? Yes. What town do you live in? Nanuet, two miles from the store. Because this is, besides the fact about what they said, this is also an area that the local government doesn't want more liquor. Uh -huh. And they made that plain to us over the last several years that they have big issues with either on-premise licenses, but also off-premise licenses, because they they have a huge crime problem in the in the area. Not uh, the store which I'm uh, having it. It's like not uh, the store. The, they have street crime. No, I understand, but I'm on a west side of uh, sorry east side of the whole neighborhood, like a Spring Valley to Route 59. All the stores are from Route 59 to opposites of uh, me. I'm the only store. It's on a east side of a. Uh, Spring Valley, and there is a, not a, any much competition, and I'm getting a business because I have a like Dunkin' Donut next to me, and one side is CVS Pharmacy. So, and there is no closed liquor store or crime rate on that particular, like it's like borderline of a chestnut ridge. All right. Ready to vote? Yes. Yeah. 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 Commissioner Fan. You've been in business since 1979, so, um, and I, I don't see any adverse history, which means you're running a, a clean business. Um, however, I think that the numbers in the area just really do not justify yet another store. Um, I guess the location you're moving to is very close to a high school, which is of some concern. So I am going to vote to deny, but I expect to see you here again. It's like a 1.1 mile from my... School. I'm going to vote to deny as well. I mean, as I said, that the, the, this, this area has asked us to limit the amount of licenses because of the issues that they're having, not just with off-premise, but also on-premise. The assemblyman or assemblywoman has indicated that she does not agree with another store in the, in the town, and, um, as well as the county legislator. And the sales numbers of the closest stores are, <coughs> other than the closest one are all dropping so yes, there, there just isn't a demand for the liquor in this area right now no, but I, I understand you, the position you're in and I hope that you can find a place quickly but I just I, I can't put one here so I'm going to vote to deny but the reason is I, like if I don't move it I have to close this I know I understand I hope you can find one very quickly good luck the next item can, is 24 can I just reapply or replication for this place you're not Another location, just reapply, yeah. And then it will take again these four or five months. Uh, do we give temps out on this or no? No, that's not permitted. Um, we can talk to Jackie. Try to move it along. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, we'll be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel soon. Yeah, so just reapply and then call the office and ask for me. Okay. 
Thank you. I'm going to wish I never did that. Your, your email is on the new website. 2427, mm -hmm. Gray's Wine and Roses Lounge, Inc. Hey, okay. bar. Okay. I heard our emails are on the new website. Uh, no. They are? You should be. No, Mine's not, is it? No, I don't it's not that, that hard to figure out. No, no, people write us anyway. No. Uh. Good morning. Please introduce yourself, please. It's that easy to get. Mm -hmm. Andre Noble, CEO of Dre White and Rules Inc. And who's with you? How you doing, Bishop Lamar Whitehead? I'm his pastor. You're his pastor? Yes. Yeah. Spiritual yeah. guidance for a bar. <laughs> Can you explain to us what you're doing here or what you want to do here? Basically, um, I find a, a need because what it is in the neighborhood is changing so fast that everybody else is leaving. And uh, um, we had one other location like two blocks over and they, you know, with the gentrification and everything, it's gone. So. It's perfect for me because I own the building and, mm. you know, I could basically regulate the situation. There was a... a How long have you owned the building? Four years. So you didn't own it when we revoked the license? No. The previous licensee that was there? Are you aware there was a license there? Yes. And what happened with it? Yes. Basically, the, um, from what the, the, the last owner because of the amount of rent that he had to pay, he had to do what he had to do to pay the rent. With me, it's more, you know, it's four floors. I could kind of manage the mortgage because it's, it's not that kind of a strain. And I think that's why it would be best for me there because even the one block over, there was a place called the Hills Lounge that was closed because she had two locations, business was so good that she had she had two across um, across the street from each other, but she closed one because the rent was basically too high. Are you running this place? Yes. You're gonna be in there every day. Yes. What do you do now? Right now, I'm waiting for the license. <laughs> to oh, be honest. What have you done in the past? Um, catering halls, do bars. I run. Oh, low key. I see. Okay, low, low key lounge. lounge. Yeah. And you drive for a moving company? Yes. Are you still going to do that or no? Oh, that's already done. Okay. Sorry, can you tell me what the hours are again? Um, basically, after work, a lot of, um, like from 5 to like 12, sometimes it depends on the weekends. It'll go like from 10 to 4. You've asked for 10 to 4, yeah. So what do you. Is that what you want, or do you? Yeah, but if, like, if I could get, um, you know, like after work too, I'll, I'll stick. Well, it we up. don't really care what time you open; it's more what time you close. Four a.m. If I'm here, Mr. Chairman. Sure. How you doing? Um, I'm just passing, and I'm more here of a support capacity because, um, as I sit down with le legislators in the community. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, businesses that are not connected with our community. And Mr. Noble has been connected with me. We do a lot of different youth events. Um, I work with the 67 Precinct. We actually have a committee called the God Squad, and we prevent a lot of violence in our community. And the reason why I'm standing here, not only because he's just a member, but because he's, he holds accountability. He's a responsible person. Um, I'm a pastor, so I know that we can't stop everybody from drinking and going out. However, we can put people in a position that is responsible and have accountability to make sure that things are ran right. So um, he's a man of integrity. He has his wife here. He has children. Um, it's going to be a family-owned, uh, you know, business. And, um, you know, he, he's a very stand-up young man. Um, I work with the inspector of the 70, 67 precinct also the 69th precinct, and he, uh, Mr. Noble, will be getting, um, I have wrote the letter, but we couldn't get it to you, but I'm just gonna, so I'm going to speak it, but he will be being honored by Senator Jesse Hamilton. He will also be honored by uh, Assembly uh, Woman Latrice Walker, and also um, Councilwoman uh, Alikia Samuel. 
uh, on December 19th for all of the work that he's done in the community. We just honored the inspector for, for the 69th precinct, Stop the Violence, on uh, three weeks ago um, at his, uh, one of his other locations on uh, Rimson Avenue. And, um, you know, he's just a hallmark of the community. And this is why I stand by him and beside him because of the things that we're going to be doing. And lastly, uh, I have a, a, a youth uh, mentorship program where that we have a hospital initiative, a NYPD initiative, where they, they get to shadow the different doctors, the different lawyers, I mean, the different um, uh, uh, police officers, so that they can see what goes on in the community. And Mr. Noble is a huge part of it, and this is why I stand by him, because, you know, if we need a location to have a mentoring program, he has yet to deny me at all to do things in our community. So this is why I stand by him and beside him for this, because he's in a, a person that has accountability. Thank okay. you so much, sir. All right, thank you. Um, what's the music situation in this place? So are you going to have recorded music, live music, what? Recorded. No DJs? On occasions. It's not in the application. I believe it was just jukebox. Because on the, yeah, so on the application, you only put jukebox. Yeah, we're going to hold you to whatever you say. And why don't we start out with no DJs? Okay. And if you come, if everything's good in a year, if you come back and ask for a DJ, I, I'll, I'll give it to you. Um, so how many security guards? Two. Three employees and two security guards? Yeah. So for now, what? I want to start off by just doing it myself because at the end of the day, I, I can't afford it with any, you know, I can't afford it. Well, so if you see, here's the deal. Whatever you put on this application, and I'm just trying to keep you from getting into trouble, mm -hmm. whatever you put on this application, if you say you're going to have security guards and inspectors or the police department goes in there and you don't have any, mm -hmm. that's a violation, which will get you in trouble. So if you don't want security, tell us. And I can, Definitely going to be. And, but then, if you do want security, you got to come back and tell us you're getting security. Okay. And I don't make those rules, unfortunately, but that's what the rules are. Okay. He lists one. What? He, on this, he listed. Yeah, on the application, there. you've listed one security guard. Do you want to just have one on the weekends? Yeah, we're going to have one security. I mean, that's what I was going to say. And you're not going to use promoters, right? Right. The apple, you said in the application you were not. Yeah. I'm just reminding you, you said you're not using yeah. promoters. All right, I'll, I'll uh, vote to approve 2 a.m. during the week, meaning uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 4 a.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, one security guard Thursday, Friday, Saturday, no DJ, no live music, no promoters. And then anything you want to add or change? There's no objection from the community board, so I Correct. will. Correct. And that's part of the reason we're not doing this. Cause we're doing this is because the community board does not object either. I will vote to approve with the same hours and um, method of operation that the chairman mentioned. Thank you. Now, this place was a big problem for the police department last time it opened, so I would imagine that if it becomes a problem again, you're going to get a short leash. That's like five, four or five years ago. Yeah, no, it was, but... It was five years ago, but it's, it doesn't take long for them to get multiple complaints again. But good luck. All right. Thank thanks. you. Thank you. Next item, 2428, West 3rd Grocery, LLC. All right. We'll skip over that for a second. 2389, Ovations Food Services, LP, and Community Baseball Club of Central New York, Inc., Good afternoon. Uh, Lindsay Farina here for Ovations Food Service LP and Community Baseball of Central New York, Inc. Uh, this location is a minor league baseball stadium for the Syracuse uh, Chiefs baseball team. Um, Co-licensing was required initially when this application was submitted and approved uh, because Community Baseball of Central New York, Inc. was receiving more than 15% of the gross alcoholic beverage revenue. Ovations Food Services LP is the food and beverage concessionaire, and they're in a landlord-tenant relationship with Central New York, Inc., uh, Community Baseball of Central New York, Inc. Uh, we recently submitted an endorsement application to remove Community Baseball of Central New York, Inc. as a co-licensee, 
because since the time the liquor license was granted, that entity was purchased by the New York Mets, and the New York Mets is receiving sponsorship dollars at City Field. So in order to remove any potential Tide House violations, we wanted to remove um, Community Baseball Central New York Inc. as a retail licensee. Our application was disapproved because the contract amendment we submitted had, the, had Community Baseball receiving a 15% profit, and we're now seeking reconsideration because the agreement is about to be amended again, where the percentage received by Community Baseball will be lowered to 14.9. Well, have we done 15, 14%? 14. I assume it's some point or another. Okay. But it's not I believe 14% is approvals. in place at some of the other stadiums a, in New York. I have a word with you. Or Me? Council. Yeah. Sorry, Council. Just give us You're one
All right, so we're, we're back on the record. Okay. So what you want us to do is do a reconsideration so that we can say that community baseball should be treated as a landlord accepting 15% and therefore not be required to be on the license. That's correct, and they are willing to amend the agreement the 14. to 14.9. Right. All right, so I'll, I'll vote to grant the reconsideration and send it back to licensing. I'll vote to grant the reconsideration as well. Good luck. Thank you. All right, we'll You'll get something it. in the mail, I would assume. Granting it or approving it, you have it all here. Oh, you want me to approve it too? No, you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. No, we're, you'll hear from licensing. Thank you. All right, we're going to take an item out of order. It's 2395 Gino Sorbillo, LLC. 2395. Maybe we have opposition here. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, what is it? It's 2395 Gino Sorbillo, LLC. Can you put your name on the record? Yes, Emanuele Bardazzi, uh, Bardazzi Law, PLSC, 85 Borough Street, New York, New York. Um, I represent the applicant, Gino Sorbillo, but- uh, You're not the applicant? No, the owner uh, was here, checked in, but as- No, but on our application, it indicates, your name's Francisco Bardazzi? Francisco Bardazzi, yeah. I'm no. the attorney. Francisco Bardazzi was here, he checked in, but who's yeah. Emmanuel Bardazzi? The attorney, me. So who's Francisco? He's the owner. Who is not? You guys here. related? No, no. You have the same last name, though. Same last name. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's just a coincidence. We're not related. Okay. Wow. So we have someone from Community Board. Okay. She she gets to go first anyway. So he's here. He's uh, here. Uh, no, he, he had to leave. That's what I was talking about. Oh, okay. He had We're to leave, and I asked permission to present the case anyway. Okay, why do you have to leave? Uh, he had a family emergency. He was here, he checked in. Okay. He did sign in. Okay, why don't you, we'll, we'll hear from her you first. Have the restaurant manager, Mr. Gatti. No, uh, we're fine, we have to hear from the opposition yeah. first. Yeah. Have a seat. No, no, um, no let's see, you know, you got, if they haven't been submitted yet, you have to ask the members if they'll take them. Hello, I have copies of my testimony here if you would like them. Uh, they do have some visuals involved. Are you going to read from it? Um, I, I am going to, yes, I am going to. This is a but um, I won't be able to explain the maps. Hearing. It was or was it? Is, is, yes. Wait, say that again? It is a 500 foot matter. So right. they already had a hearing. Right. Did you testify at the 500 foot hearing? No, I was unable to. I was taking care of my. 100 year old mother and did that section did, of August. Did the community, do you know if the community board submitted anything to the five? Oh, hold on, I'll find out. I know that they've submitted their resolution. Uh, there is a letter from a resident. Um, in right, the why don't you go ahead, put your name on the record and go ahead and okay. say what you're going to say. My name is Zella Jones. I'm president of Noho Bowery Stakeholders Incorporated, um, a community benefit organization. Uh, with over 350 members in the subject area. Um, there are a number of key factors in the findings of the 500 foot rule hearing that need correction. One, this location has not been the site of a licensed restaurant for 10 years. The previous tenant of seven years, a similar pizza establishment failed and changed its method of operation multiple Ma times. Ma'am, can you, I, I'm gonna need you to focus on why he should not have a full liquor license, the facts of, of who was licensed and how long we have. So what, well, why don't you just tell us what the problem is with putting a license there at this place? Well, uh, because it is, a, it is a location that has never previously been licensed. And we have too many, we have more than 22 within 500 feet of this location. Okay. Um, it is surrounded by residences. Um, I, I have the map to show you the zoning and the, and the use groups that are around it, but um, there, there's ground floor retail and what was 
originally vacant or loft or, or uh, store space is now residential space. So the density of people living uh, over uh, licensed establishments is, is uh, greater than it ever has been before. Um, we have a number of pizza uh, restaurants in the area already. There are three, one of them quite famous, uh, has been written up in the New York Times and an eater uh, in a pizza making contest. None of, uh, none of the reviewers or uh, writers um, have given any kind of glowing um, report on Gino Sorbillo. Uh, they have reviewed it, and they most often say it's ordinary. So I and we've because there was a pizza location there, uh, operating there just previously, and it failed and failed very badly, and then morphed into doing other things. Um, I am concerned that like what? Uh, pardon. What did they do? Uh, they they closed down entirely. Then they opened up just as a as a wine bar and stopped serving any any pizza. And then they did events. And then they they took they originally had two entrances and they closed one entrance to, uh, entrance and papered it up. And then they had a kind of um, uh, curtained entrance. I did. Um, it was very obvious that the, the pizza business was not working for them at all, and I'm sure they were trying to hang on. Uh, they bought a very expensive pizza oven, which is largely the reason that uh, Gino Sorbio was there. Um, it was imported from Italy. Um, I'm sure anybody would like to keep that working if it's possible and not have to spend again to do it. But... Um, there's, uh, there is uh, there are other wine and, uh, and beer establishments around the area that work very well with the with the um, with the full OPs, but we don't see a need for there to be full liquor okay. for a pizza parlor. And okay, do I, you have any problems, particularly with the operation as it is now? Meaning, are there are there complaints regarding noise, crowds, um, music? Nothing appreciable. I, um, I think that they behave themselves well in, in their current capacity. They have just added a sidewalk cafe. Um, they, were, they did put an awning over the cafe to help deaden the noise somewhat for the, the rent-stabilized neighbors who live upstairs. Um, uh, I, I'm not characterizing these people as being uh, irreparable um, uh, or uh, uh, irresponsible. Um, it's just this location. We are they're surrounded with liquor licenses in this location, and um, and adding another potential site that can have a full OP license, um, particularly if this fails, as the other pizza restaurants have, um, is a real liability for the makeup of the current neighborhood. Um, I was addressing. It seemed to me in the 500 foot rule. Uh, he findings that um, the issue of there being a 10-year history of restaurants in that location was important to the judge. Um, he also brought up uh, the public benefit and that having more restaurants on Bowery was a benefit to Bowery and was bringing the area up. This is absolutely not the case what, at all. Um, uh, there are... Uh, in the continuing evolution of the Bowery, um, it has been the proliferation of retail, fashion design, and gallery establishments that has changed Bowery from Houston North to um, St. Mark's Place, um, and certainly not the, the what had been a history of wall-to-wall -wall bars up and down the Bowery in that area as soon as they started leaving and the galleries came in and, the, and we had real shopping going on, the whole character of the area started improving a great deal, including crime, <coughs> which is not rampant anymore, and drugs, uh, which is not rampant anymore, I'm very happy to say. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Do you, would you like copies of No, that's fine. I think you word? said, we, we got everything you said. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Who's that? Oh, it's 
He's the general manager of the restaurant. Okay. Go ahead. Why do you need liquor? So we have been listening to uh, the um, statements from <coughs> Ms. Jones in, uh, on behalf of uh, Neighborhood Association. And I have to say that these representations were highly inaccurate, to say the least. Gino Sorbillo is not an ordinary pizzeria. It's an international chain and is a brand that was invented by a guy that is regarded as one of the best pizza makers in the world. The fact that uh, someone may say that the reviews are ordinary and the place is ordinary. I think what she was pointing out is that yeah. there's plenty of pizza around the Bowery. Okay. Um, I brought with me, I will address the point shortly. I brought with me a few articles of local newspaper. When I say local, I'm talking about Bowery newspaper. Um, I can pass along this material if you want, but I will read very quick. The title of this one is Legendary Naples Pizza Finally mi Migrates to New York City. Obviously, we're talking about Gino Sorbillo. Um, yes. I'd like to read another title. Naples Pizza Master Gino Sorbillo headed to Bowery with a new pizzeria. Uh, when Mayor de Blasio traveled to Italy, Two years ago, was passed the wish to go eat specifically a Gino Sorbillo. Mayor de Blasio was present at the grand opening for business of Gino Sorbillo one year ago. Um, and so I would say that uh, Gino Sorbillo is everything but ordinary. He's an international. international okay, can we focus on why do you need yeah. the liquor? So we need the liquor. And why didn't you try to get the liquor when you initially got your license? So the background is uh, the following. Um, initially, we applied for uh, uh, the full legal license application uh, with the Community Board 2 of Manhattan, which is uh, sadly known as one of the toughest community board in the, in the city. And so our initial application was for the, the, full, the full legal license, but um, we had uh, a negative recommendation for the community board. So uh, with them, we agreed on starting with uh, a wine and beer. And now, um, after one year of operation, no complaints, uh, no patterns altercations, no nothing, uh, a, a, a very well behavior, we're here again. Um, and um, what I would like to go through is uh, uh, the factors that uh, would make you understand that uh, the granting of this upgrade from a wine and beer to uh, full legal license is in the public interest. First off, I would like to say that um, this is a pizzeria is not a strip club, is not a pub, is not a joint where people uh, go and get drunk and then go back into the street and create public disorder. We're not looking at something like that. We're, we're looking at pizzeria. Yeah, we we're looking at a pizzeria with a very soft hours of operation, even less than what was stipulated originally with the community board, which is uh, until 10.30 p.m. Uh, in the during the week and weekdays and then weekend we're looking at probably 11 11 30 tops um, so uh, this again this is not a bar this is not a place where people go and get drunk and then create disorders just a pizzeria people go have dinner and the reason why we ask for the license is that there are uh, a few liquors uh, from uh, the Napolitan tradition that will complement the dining experience in, uh, in this pizzeria. And the people, customers, are asking for that. 
Obviously, this will be profitable for us. I'm not saying no, but this is to complete the dining experience in an establishment that is like, very well regarded. Um, talking about the factors, it's uh, uh, out of question that there's a lot of uh, um, um, establishments that uh, work that are holding the full legal license in the proximity of uh, this uh, establishment, but it is also true that this is the only one international pizza business. It's uh, uh, a very popular uh, establishment. There is not, uh, contrary to what Ms. Jones was pointing out, <coughs> there is not a, ma uh, um, a large um, offer of pizza in the neighbor. Actually, I counted two establishments besides Sorbillo, and one of them, <coughs> with all due respect, is Domino Pizza. So um, <coughs> I think that uh, this, uh, uh, this establishment is very unique and add characters to the neighborhood and offer, contributes to offer more variety of food. And also we're talking about um, an organic uh, pizzeria. The products are all organic, biologic, biologic organic, and this is uh, a unique feature of this pizzeria. So uh, we understand that there are other establishments holding the license, but also this is a unique uh, kind of uh, restaurant, food establishment, and it's not meant to create issues uh, or public disorder for its nature. And the fact that if this license is granted, uh, this is not going to change <coughs> the nature of the establishment, which is going to still uh, be still a pizzeria. It will not be transformed in a bar or in a late night a pub or something like that. Um, the, the impact on the vehicular traffic is the minimis in this case because Bari is a very central district. Uh, which no, is I've skipped that when I get that. Very well served with, uh, with um, subways and stuff. Uh, history of liquor violations. There is no history. It's a clean sheet. Uh, no complaint, no altercation, as, said, as I pointed out before. Uh, other factor, uh, what else to say? Um, it's organic food increases the popularity of, uh, of the neighborhood, of the district, and attracts tourism because Gio Sorbo is very famous in Italy, in Europe, in Asia. Uh, and obviously um, more uh, <coughs> uh, opportunity, more business opportunity with the granting of the medical license would mean also more employment. Gino Sobilo this time is... Okay, um, I understand the worldwide fame, but that doesn't change the fact that you have neighbors <coughs> who live upstairs of you who are in close proximity, who are opposing <coughs> this uh, change commissioner uh, so have you has uh, your, I wish your client were here because I want to know <coughs> if he's reached out to these yes, neighbors uh, I can answer to them. I can answer to that and actually I don't know if it's on on your file but um, <coughs> the community was reached out and uh, the um, um, we uh, filled out like a list of uh, a petition uh, from the residents of the community that uh, was presented to the community board <coughs> and uh, it was entirely disregarded. So uh, I'm talking about neighbors who are in your specific building who yes, are right next to absolutely. you. Absolutely. You've spoken to them directly? Yes, we did. And they actually one, one of the neighbors, one of um, the building is uh, owned by our landlord. So, um, yes, we spoke to him. Obviously, he was in favor of that. And not only him, not only the building, other surrounding buildings. 
um, were well aware of this and they expressed their support by signing that petition. Um, anything else? No. That is it. Thank you. You ready to vote? <coughs> yes. Commissioner Fan. Uh, given that the 500 foot hearing report states that public convenience has been met, you have that decision. I assume that you have these conditions and stipulations that were um, stated by the ALJ from the 500 foot hearing report. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, you don't need to, me to read them, do you? Um, yes, please. If, if you no, can. I mean, if you want those conditions to be part of the license, then we need to read them. Yeah. Well, they ha currently have community yeah, they steps. have the same. They yeah, have I think they're the, the uh, same as it's hours. daily closing hours of midnight, no live music, dancing or DJs. The doors no yeah, promote, also, yeah, I also pointed I no promoters. To, to address is, uh, Let me just finish. Music. Yeah, sorry. No promoters, soundproofing, all noise. All windows and doors closed at all times. No intermittent drink specials. No unlimited food and drink specials. Um, and with that, I will vote to support your change. I'm going to vote to deny. Um, if this has been open a year, it's never been an OP, as was pointed out. It was always a, a restaurant wine even before you guys bought it. So you bought it knowing it was going to be a restaurant wine. There's 25, at least 25 OP, uh, on premise licenses within 500 feet. And while your pizza may be the best pizza in New York City, there are other, it's not unique to this neighborhood uh, as far as the type of food you're serving. Um, and so I just don't see the public interest. I would not have granted this if this initial application came before me. And I don't see that I can grant it now, uh, given, the, given the community board opposition. Now, if you can get the community board to get on board with you, then come back again. Um, and well, the community board is just a recommendation. As you I, I understand, know I understand well. that, but there's 24 licenses within 500 feet, 25 licenses within 500 this feet. Is not it a is a saturated There's nothing area. to worry about uh, here. Sir, the, the members have voted. So. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't worried about it. Uh, the next item is 2428 West 3rd Grocery LLC. Sorry, Tom, what is it again? It's 2428 West 3rd Grocery LLC. Oh, I see. Sorry. Got it. Can you put your name on the record? Ben Sharav, S H A R A V, attorney for West 3rd Grocery, and I'm here with uh, Mr. Al Ghazi, Mohammed Al Ghazi, the applicant. He got a license revoked in 2008. Are you aware of that? We're aware of that. Uh, he he oh. had another place. He had to he had to go back to Yemen. Uh, he gave it to someone. It was supposed to, he had a manager was hired. It was supposed to turn in the license. He thought the license was turned in. He didn't know that the person continued to use it. He only found out about that. So you're basically telling me that your client was a licensee and that he was. So poor supervising it that he gave the license to someone else to turn in, and they never did. He, he we lost. The, we yeah. closed That's the, not really a, a the, good start. He, well, he, yeah, I, we closed the store. The, the landlord he he no give us lease. After I left five months, and he then I called Nasser. I called him to return all the license. He told me he did. We, we lost the store the end of uh, two thousand seven. About. Uh, uh, November or December, I believe. He had to go to Yemen on a family emergency. His wife was in Yemen, and he. When did he go to Yemen? Uh, I have in the passport. He, he, no, what yeah. year, what month, and what year? June first, two thousand seven. June first. 
and and you left the store, and you were the only owner of the store. Uh, no, me and, and Akram Nasser. Akram, he was in a school outside New York City. The other, he's since become an airline pilot. He was yeah, very successful. Mo most of the violations took place before he left. Six sales to minors, suspension of cigarettes, because I'm sure you were selling untaxed cigarettes. And now you want us to, what have you been doing since 2008? I, uh, I'm delivery, and I was working for family and a restaurant one time and a store. Do we have anything that he was doing? He came back, he's been making deliveries to uh, similar bags. stores. Now he's here with his family. He's, uh, he'll, he'll be yeah. completely in charge. He of said this. he's a, it says in his application that he's a partner at AA Delhi Mini Mart. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, well, he was. That's th up this until no, 2015. This, right. This one is no half. Uh, well, so, only. Uh, so you owned a deli with somebody else in 2013 to 2015. Yeah, this one too. Uh, we we sell it to back to the landlord. And uh, that place was not licensed. Correct. No, 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 we didn't ask for be licensed because the surety next to us. Or, or because you got your license revoked. Yeah, the, the church told us Belize, and I, I, believe, I respect that. And, and we sell, we couldn't make it. So, uh, give it back to the landlord. And this so, place, you've owned West Third Deli since 2015? Yeah, this one is. Uh, is uh, so, what'd you do between 2008 and 2013? I was making delivery, and I was working. Uh, sometime the delivery is slow. I, I work in the store, Dali Man. Sometime uh, refrigerator, like uh, start. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, he's please now. I'm with my family here. You know, I, I'm in, try, trying to make a, a, a sort of fresh start. And he's, my wife. and he's. And he's going to, and he's he in can make all the fresh time. starts he wants, but he's, he, 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 I have six sales to minors here, which no. is unheard of. This one plus one false, plus selling untaxed cigarettes, no, one, which is actually a crime. Th this one, one, uh, I, I, I remember in 2004, the, the officer he sent me a, a big guy. I told him, Give me the ID. And the guy he snatched the beer and left. After one hour later, the, the officer come, he told me, you, you sell two minor. I tell him, I ask him the ID, I'm waiting for him, he's a he big man. He snatched the beer and go. Then after... Uh, All right, I don't want to hear the right, stories yeah. about him. Are you ready to vote? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Are you ready to vote? I'm, he's... I mean, he's got a bad, bad history. And now you just told me he left his partner and moved to Yemen and didn't care what happened to the old he license. Did, he did care. He was told that he, he instructed the person to turn the license in. He was told that it was. I mean, this is 10 years ago. He, th he thought that years. in 12 years. Is, is, is not my right. I, I think, okay. Uh, officer, is not my partner I left. I left uh, Nasir Alwan. He's a uh, uh, friend of mine. My partner, he... Okay, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't want, at this point, I don't want to hear it. The reality is it happened. We'll see, what's go, we'll see where this is yeah, going. We lost the, li the, the lease. All right, I, I believe in second chances. I hope that go ahead. I don't see you here again. You won't. And you will make a lie out of me. So with that, I'm going to approve. Right, thank you. I'll approve, too. All right, thank I'm you. I'm going to write that down, though. All right, just wait for me a second. Oh, before I step aside, there's another. I, I, people, other people signed in before you I did. I did sign in. No, I was told to, they told just I just asked for an adjournment on the other one. They it was signed. Uh, it's two. I'm probably suggesting that other people signed in. What is it for you? Oh, two, four, three, one. And I. Was, no, we haven't got it to it yet. So you're going to yeah, have to so wait. Oh, okay. have a seat and we'll call it. Okay. All right. Thank. Two, four, three, one. Okay. Twenty-three, eighty-one. 500 Entertainment, Inc. Good afternoon. My name is Jeremy Lopez, owner of 500 Entertainment, DBA Fem 100 Banquet Hall. Do you have steps with the community board? I just received an email this morning regarding that. Um, I wrote it quick, but the was uh, with Bronx CB6 along with the 48th precinct um, support, as long as it's closing by 1 a.m. seven days a week and no more than 200 persons at any time on the premise. Those are the only stipulations I received. 1 a.m. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. 
and no more than 200. Where is the food coming from? I have a contract with Caridad Restaurant. They've been in business for many years. They'll be, they'll be our main outsource, and clients will be able to bring their own food as well. Is that allowed? Well, is that, Why didn't you do it? Is, it a, is that a licensee? Do they have a, their own license? Who? The restaurant. The, yes. All right. What's what's the? I'm sorry. You mean to no, to go ahead. What's the um, the arrangement between you and the and the restaurant as far as? So the arrangement is they we have we have their full menu. When clients come, we present the menu to them. The clients will order directly from them, and they will deliver it to our establishment. We have a heat. They're lot. not ordering the food from you. They're ordering it from the restaurant. Yes, directly. Yeah. That's that's a problem. Yeah. See that? I mean, that was my problem with the application. Is you're not set up as a caterer. Yeah. You're set up as basically you're going to provide DJs in a room. And alcohol. Correct. And alcohol. Well, we provide full service. We have a uh, party but planning. But you're not you're not providing the food. Someone else's, and you can enter into these concessionaire agreements, but they have to go through you, not through the client. Okay. That Correct. Can, that, that can definitely be established. Set up with the board. And what's the deal with the? And you can't have your own food brought in. He said that the clients are also going to be able to bring their own food. Oh. See, I, I didn't, we didn't know about the uh, any agreement. I think they had with some uh, restaurant. It was more of the. I think we were just being told they're going to outsource the food. We sent we sent uh, we sent them the agreement that we have with the restaurant. Was it in there? No, he's saying that he's going to let his customers also bring their own food. Bring their own food. Is that it? Would be an option if it's allowed. Is that in addition to yeah, the food separate. you're going to order, or is that instead of? In addition or, or instead of. If or the order. client decides that they don't want because, you know, it's a Spanish restaurant, and they don't offer so every. So again, we're back to you're just providing place, DJ, and booze. That's not permitted. I mean, you, you can have multiple concessionaire agreements with other restaurants. Yeah, so yes, I'm, work, I'm working on that. But I, you I, can't let them bring their own food in. Okay. It's, it's got to be an arrangement where the person who's hiring the hall contracts with you, okay, and then you contract with the restaurant. Gotcha. To have so the, order, the orders come directly to us, and we order, and we just basically place the orders. And then you had the food out, you serve the food. Okay. Yeah, that that, would, that was uh, definitely part of the plan. And they can't obviously. You're the one supplying the alcohol. You can't be getting the alcohol from the restaurants. No, absolutely not. All right. Are you aware of the history at this place? Uh, yes, I am. The NYPD, I met with them several times. I met at the precinct. They came to the establishment, gave me the full details on everything that occurred there, which I wasn't aware of. The landlord wasn't aware of either, and um, we're, we're fully aware. All right, you have any questions? No. You ready to vote? Yes, with the community board steps. 1 a.m. close, 200 persons maximum, DJ, live bands, occasionally after dinner hours, occasional dancing, four security guards, principal managing. I vote to approve. I'll vote to approve as well and add on to those stipulations that you need one security guard for every 50 guests and that any food has to be through a concessionaire agreement that runs through your company, not through the customers. Okay. And no, the customers can't supply their own food. Good luck. That's okay with me. Okay. Thank you very much. Next item, 2432, Tropical Island Lounge, Inc. Good morning. I should say good afternoon, actually. Um, my name is Franz Bernardin. I'm the attorney for Tropical Island Lounge. Where's your client? She's at the restaurant. Uh, Tropical Island Lounge is a very intimate setting. So I, I'm not going to waste your time here. Um, this is a diff this is Spring Valley again. Okay. Very difficult place to get a liquor license. The police, in this instance, have actually sent us a letter protesting this application. So there's no way 
that I would vote to grant it without her being here, at least answering the questions I have. And I don't know that it would have got granted anyway. I'm not telling you that's the only reason because there are problems with this, but there's no way we're going to go forward with the situation as it is without her talking. So I don't know what you want to do, whether you want to uh, just let us vote on it, because I already told you how I'm voting, or you want to... Is there any, perhaps, questions that you have I might be able to answer? No, because i got to hear from her, because frequently I get lied to, and I can't really hold it against you. If you lie to me, her, I can. I got you. Is, uh, we'll have opportunity for leave or to adjourn? Yes, you can adjourn okay. one time. And while it's pending, is there any way that, that temporary permit can be granted? Because no. we filed that concurrently oh, okay. with... Not with the police being uh, right. against it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had an opportunity to speak with the police since then several times. Well, then you need to get something in writing from them, but we wouldn't grant a temporary in Spring Valley anyway, right, given the history here. Okay. But what do you want it on, two weeks? 12-19. 12-19. What, what's the following date? January 9th. January 9th. I'm out of town there, too. Uh, I have a court appearance on December 19th. January 9th, I'm out of town. Um, What's after that, Tom? January 23rd. That's fine. January 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. Your client better not be selling alcohol between now and then. <laughs> 2380 LI Wines and Liquors, Inc. Good afternoon. Hi. Could you put your name on the record, please? Uh, Stephen Chin, I'm the manager of the restaurant. Oh, did he? He's the owner. I'm the owner. Yeah. You're the, you're the uh, applicant. Yeah. It's a liquor store. Yeah, liquor store. Yeah, for the liquor store. Who are you? Oh, Good. I'm uh, his manager. I, I, I help him manage. So you just said restaurant. Because you misunderstood, or? Oh, uh, no, because I will be managing the. Uh, oh, the restaurant. The, the, the liquor store. He has the a, liquor store. Go to the yeah. liquor store. He has a restaurant also. Right, no, I see that. Feet. Okay, all right, go ahead. Is there any p opposition here? No, go ahead. Why should we put a liquor store here? Yeah, because uh, what it is is uh, there isn't that many liquor stores around the area. And they're also uh, looking to sell sake. You actually have five stores within 3.2 miles. Yeah, but they're like in a like different town, right? I mean, it's not a straight drive through. Right. And we feel that, you know, uh, if we, bring, we are looking to sell sake as part of uh, the, the liquor store, and they will serve the customer because they, now they don't need to specifically go to a Japanese restaurant to be able to get sake home. You guys work together now? Yeah. I'm, I'm managing the restaurant for him now. But when the liquor store opens, I'll be managing the liquor store. How far is this from the restaurant? Uh, about three miles. Why did you want to open a liquor store? Just to sell sake? No, because the restaurant business is kind of like going downhill as well. Because there's so many of us exist. So we're looking into like other businesses. Are you guys related? You guys are not related. So what's your name? Steven Chin. And you're uh, Ho Dee Lee? Yes. So you have in your application that you're the manager of the sushi place. You're not the manager? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm manager in the sushi place. This time... Do you own it? Yeah, I'm owner. All right, you just misspoke. Okay, so you're managing your own restaurant. Yeah, you know, so he got to manage. I manage. He got to manage two, 
sample is the go to the Lego store there. So it's the it's the not a customer, my old customer in the nurse one. It's like it's the Saki in the my nurse ones. It's I need it for the 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 But you own Maki Sushi Sushi Ma yeah, and you manage it. Okay. Yeah. And you're fo focusing on Asian products, or are you focusing on sake? What's the business both. plan? Both, got a both. We got a sake and a, and a, like a, the scotch and the sun, the wine. Okay. I got nothing. There is a protest, the third closest store protested, which is a new store from 2015, Summer Wine and Liquor, yeah. for the record. New store. OK, um, whenever you're ready. Ready to vote? Closest store, it's almost two miles away. This is a very small store. Yeah, it's really, really small So school. I'm voting, I'm voting. I'm going to vote to approve. Thank you. Chairman Bradley. I'm going to vote to approve as well, basically because of how small the store is. There's four stores within 3.2 miles. The, all four of them have shown mostly an increase generally in sales while there may have been a down year in there but the sales have generally gone up um, and because this is such a small store I will at 300 or at uh, 680 square feet retail I'll vote to approve good luck thank, thank you. you thank you next item 2410 Desiree's wine and liquors Inc Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Madam Commissioner. Kenneth Belkin, appearing for the applicant, 225 Broadway, Suite 715, New York, New York. Uh, I did submit a supplemental via email on Friday. Did you, everyone get it? Yes. Yep, they got it. If not, I have, okay. Uh, is, is this store going to be uh, bulletproof? It is, sir. Um, and and who, are, who are the, are you aware of the four closest stores? I am aware of the are four they closest stores. Are they all bulletproof, stores. too? I am not certain of that. Um, but my client tells me they are. They are. Um, you know, this premises, first of all, this is my client's uh, third attempt. She was here before you twice before, once before with me, once pro se. Um, she was denied on both of those while we're here again, obviously. The primary reason. Why, why was she denied? Just too close to other stores? Yes, it was the proximity. Uh, in fact, at, at the last one, you had voted uh, to approve, and uh, it was Commissioner Ford that had voted not to. Really? Um, Shocking. <laughs> So I'm hoping to change that today. She took what the board said to heart. She educated herself. She sought mentors in this industry. She went to seminars. Recently, before filing this application, she had went to a seminar at Hunter College about licensing. She had bombarded your office with emails about potential locations. Uh, she bombarded me, and to the extent that I couldn't answer her questions, I directed her to email the State Liquor Authority. Um, well, that was big of you. <laughs> Just create more work for us. <laughs> well, she wanted to be, you know, as reasonably certain as possible that the third time would do the trick. Uh, she selected a location, not the subject premises, 948 950 Anderson Avenue in the Bronx, uh, zip code 10452. It has some licensing history. It was previously licensed uh, beginning November 7, 2012. Uh, the licensee was Yankees Liquor and Spirits Corp under license number 126304. Uh, that license extended through 12, December 29, 2014, when a second licensee, I guess, had um, taken over the premises and was approved for license. That was Jaritza Spirits Corporation, SLA serial number 12823. One, one, and that license uh, remained active according to the records I could see until November 30th, 2017. Uh, I do believe there's been no disciplinary uh, history associated with the subject premises. 
Uh, my client, she has a background. She worked in property management for 20 years. Uh, she retired in 2016. She had worked for the Riverbay Corporation. She had planned for the past two years, it's been a long process to get to where we are today. As her retirement, she would open a liquor store, something to leave to her son, Odell, and you know, this is why we're here again today. Um, you come out of retirement to work nine to nine, six days a week? Well, the difference is it's my own, um, and I enjoy working, that wasn't a problem. Um, that's my passion right now. And your son is how old? And he will work there with you? Yes, he will. Okay. What, um, what was I going to ask? I forgot what I was going to ask. So you're going to manage the place with two employees? Yes, my son and my daughter. And my son has a Oh, they're both going to be your employees. Yes. Oh. May I, may I continue, Mr. Chairman? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Yeah, oh, hold on one second. Yes. Jackie, the last store, the fourth closest, yeah, those sales that. numbers can't be right, correct? Fourth closest. Wow, that's a big jump. You're right. That's it's probably bizarre, not though, because there's like, there's like four typos in that. If it's <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just the first digit. I'll go to, I'll, I'll no, but even that. then, if you go to the first, oh, I guess that could be with the, the, the 15 sales could be 88, yeah, I can right? Yeah, take that. But I do want to, um, the records that I have show for the prior license that it was uh, Jerry Spirits from 2014 to 2017. Yeah, Jaritza, Jaritza, right? J A R Y. J A R Y yeah. Spirits at the same address, and they did have in 2015 through 16, they did have three. So oh yeah, Jerry. I'm sorry. I don't. I didn't see where you had that other one. Yeah, Jaritza was, was actually the principal's name. The I was. Oh. Mis Reading it. If they change a corporate officers, we don't. I don't. It, it is Jerry Spirits. Yeah, because we have a note that it said the location was licensed since 2012. 2012. Yeah. yeah, I do that, so I know that's right. All right. My eyesight uh, is failing. So me. you see that this location, part of the problem that they shut is they got three sales to minors, which cost them eighteen thousand five hundred. We Over. were unaware of that, and my. Well, I mean, I'm just telling her, warning her that can take away a month of profit. Yeah in a pretty quick period of time. Um, we, we were unaware. She had emailed asking about the disciplinary history, and I, I believe the email returned said that there was none, may, maybe a mistake, but we were unaware of that. One and a year for three years in a row. So 2014, actually, no, I'm sorry. December of 2014, January of 2015, and then January of 2016, they had sales to minors. No, I can't speak to the prior licensee, but I, I can tell you Ms. Robinson is committed to running an above-board establishment, and she will be strictly enforcing all ID uh, policies and will not sell to anyone underage. All right, well, we don't want, I don't want you to strike out third, the third, no, third, third time's a charm. So I'll, I'll vote to um, grant the license. The place was, was previously licensed. It closed in June of 2017. The, it's going to be a bulletproof store, relatively small at uh, 434 square feet retail. And all of the other surrounding stores, which there's four of them in 0.6 miles, are bulletproof as well. So I don't believe that this is going to affect them at being a small neighborhood store. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fan, do you? I was just kidding. I'm going to vote to approve his own. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're very grateful for your approval. It's been a long process. Have a good day, everybody. You too. Next item is 2390, Sports Zone Cafe, Inc. I thought we'd get out of here quicker today. I know, right? There's only two of us. Good afternoon. Uh, I guess it isn't Ford. I can't blame him. <laughs> it's probably me. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Good afternoon, Chairman. Um, my name is Miguel Acosta. I'm the licensee. I would like to kindly request for this matter to be held over to the December 16th um, hearing. 19th. Uh, 19th. There was some information and documentation I provided this morning a little bit too late since I What began. number is this? Uh, 23. It's 2390. 90. Oh, 90. Sports You've been here before. Yes, the last time I was here was for a disorderly premise uh, that was dismissed. Dismissed. Uh, because of the fact uh, there's supporting documentation I would like to provide and speak to Ms. Martin. Well, I mean, he, he, here's the deal. You <coughs> you made an offer here. Yes, understood. I made the so offer. So we're not really taking any, uh, what, is it evidence or is it like to mitigate 
Well, I mean, if you want to put evidence on, you should go to hearing. Yeah, that's what I would like to discuss with Ms. Marcico because that came for the hearing on November 6th. She had. Uh, All right, you want to, if that's what you yes, want to do, that's you could fine. Send it back to council. I'll discuss yeah, with Marcico. 12 19. Well, wait, do you, do you want. Well, I'll you? just take it, send it back to council. I'll speak to Ms. Marcico. And okay, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Send it that. back to council. Thank you. Okay. Are you the owner or the rep? Oh, okay. Good luck. Happy Next I item. I like you knew too much about this process was the reason I was. Next item, 24, 21, and 22, Review Entertainment, Inc. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 24, 21, and 24, 22. Commissioner, Mr. Chairman, Terry Katsouris, I have requested this matter be sent to council's office, but I was told uh, personal appearance was required, so I'm here. What number is it? Sorry. 2421 and 2422. Are you sending your offer too? Pardon? There's an offer. You offer cancer. You're just taking it. Let me tell you the reason. I don't need to know. You want it to go, but you're, you're, you want the offer back, is what you're saying. Uh, Actually, I'd like to keep it in status quo, but I'd like to go back to council's office. This this map, this place is in contract, and the proposed licensee or the purchaser came up with a notice of pleading on another store that he had. I have to resolve that. Is this because you want okay. a temporary issue? It's no. all about nothing. No. So why don't you just cancel and let them reapply? No, because the, the other contract. disciplinary is going to hold up the, yeah. this application. So... Are you buying? Is that, are they buying a corporation, or are they just buying? No, it's an asset sale. Okay. Well, uh, cancel this one. What's the difference? Well, it's going to come to you. Well, um, are you? Are they still things. open? Is that what you? Yeah. Oh, so you want it to stay open? Okay. They're All right, then. How, the let's send the back to council's Thank office. You so much. I can't guarantee you're going to get the cancel and bond anymore. Uh, well, can we put it over till March? You may no. no you may be. <laughs> Your client expires January 31st. Uh, we, so it's with in the this process. history, Meredith may be very upset when she sees this come back. Thank you so much. So it's going back to council. Thank you. 2376, Revalue Wine and Liquor, LLC. God, there's a lot of package stores today, huh? That's Timothy Allen for okay. the applicant. With me is the owner, David Carey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is there any protests? So uh, Lefferts, Lefferts Avenue Corp doing business as New Moon Liquors objects. Uh, she Go says ahead. she's a block and a half, but what I see, it looks like she's four blocks away. She's on the other side of uh, Kings Highway, and she's more in a residential, more mixed residential in some stores. Uh, her sales are flat. Um, no, they're actually up a little. They're, bit. they're going up a little, but there, there must be some other reason why she's not really picking up a lot, right? She's around the 280, 270 mark. But the, the she next open regular hours, or don't you know? Yeah, he went by. She's re she's open regular hours. She's bigger than he is. He's a small store. Yeah, no, it is a slow volume. But the, the next closest store is going to do two million dollars this year, and has gone up every year, from 1.1 to. to 1.5, I'm sorry, 1.5, 1.6, 1 1.7. Now for six months, it's 1.1. And that's on um, Avenue J. And that's a kosher store, and this is going to be a kosher store. So he's going to be closed, as far as the, the closest woman who's uh, business who's complaining, he's going to be closed from sundown on Friday all day Saturday. And it's only going to carry kosher items. So, and he's about 500 square feet. And you're saying MB Vineyard is kosher as well? Yes. Okay. So he he hasn't opposed, and he's not having any problems. Are you focused? So you're, everything you sell is going to be kosher. Have to be the least it's in his lease, or it will break. I mean, isn't all alcohol kosher? No, like you have um, you have some vodkas that aren't kosher. You have tequila with the worm, and it's not kosher. You have certain wine. I knew I shouldn't have been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> some, a lot of wine down there. <laughs> I think no. there's some things that will qualify as kosher that aren't certified as kosher. That's what I thought. Yeah, I thought like all the vodka I thought was. I didn't realize it wasn't. Okay. Is this bulletproof or no? No. Are any of the other ones bulletproof? Yeah, none of the others are. All right. Well, I, I mean, since you're selling all kosher stuff, I think in my mind there's a 
public convenience to that. I guess you're ready to vote? Yes. Uh, closest store is uh, four, five, seven, eight blocks away. Um, small store, 462 square feet of retail. Kosher products only. I vote to approve. I vote to approve as well with kosher only. Thank you. Next item, 2383, Albert Social Butterfly, Inc. Good afternoon, Joseph Levy here on behalf of the applicant, Albert Social Butterfly. The application before you is for an uh, alteration, slight change to the method of operation. How did you get this done? <laughs> so the story here is that uh, we did this original license many years ago, I think it was seven or eight years ago, uh, and my client, who is very much a do-it-yourself type of person, <clears throat> took it upon himself to make some changes to his space, uh, got a violation years ago for doing that, for moving things around, adding a DJ booth, things like that, changing his kitchen, uh, paid that violation, went to the Department of Buildings to get certified, uh, things certified, sign-offs to make sure everything was kosher from a Department of Buildings, New York City standpoint, didn't recognize that there was an element to be done here as well. Um, got a violation, we paid a violation over the summer uh, for not conforming to an application, about $12,000 if I recall, and part of that CNC we put in was to notify the community board and file the appropriate paperwork with the authority. We notified the community board. Uh, they didn't even want to call us to a meeting. They said they love them as neighbors. They're like the only good place on that stretch. And they issued us a notice indicating that they were under the impression that the way we've been operating is the way we're supposed to operate. So um, again, we paid a huge fine for for that, that issue and the applications before you were to bring the place into compliance. The CFO is one of the rare ones that actually does not restrict entertainment, so the dancing and live music component is actually allowed. All right. Wait, who's your, where's your client? Uh, Albert is at the restaurant. All right, I mean, seeing that they don't care, uh, th that, they're, they, that we have a letter here indicating that they have unanimously agreed to, to not object to operate as follows, which is 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. Wednesday through Thursday, Friday and Saturday, 10 to 4, live music, live disc jockey, dancing is permitted, no out, no use of outdoor space. I'll approve. I'll approve as well. And if I could, just one quick question for counsel. Um, there was that issue of that one disciplinary that came after the fact that was actually before. So I would just resolve it with the prosecutor. Okay. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Next time is 2403, Eight Tuxedos, Inc. Joseph Levy here again. Uh, Eight Tuxedos, Inc. I have with me uh, operating principal Edward Buckingham. This is a restaurant that's been in operation for a few years now. Um, I think I alluded to this application coming down the pike a few board meetings ago when I was here to resolve uh, a CNC for a violation they received. Um, so I started telling you a little bit about the history at that point. Um, I did not do this original liquor license application. Prior counsel did. Uh, just to, assuming you haven't been to the restaurant, so I'll give you sort of the layout. You have a ground floor space when you walk in the door, stairs down to the main dining area, and then further stairs down to a, to a cellar beneath that. Uh, at the time they originally applied, they did not have a CFO that allowed them to have eating and drinking use on the lower, lower level. So that was not included as part of the application. Um, it was built out from before they even got there as sort of like a private space, but the CFO didn't allow it, so it wasn't part of the license application, or so they thought. Uh, through a FOIL request that we placed to put together our alteration application to include the lower level and add an additional bar, we found that the original attorney actually um, included the lower level and somehow the license got issued and there was a bar down there that was designated as the stand-up bar and the bar that was upstairs which is smaller which was being used as a stand-up bar was actually listed as a service bar so this created a whole lot of confusion uh, we obviously self-reported this to the community board and explained to them how the alteration we were trying to effectuate already existed so now we were just trying to bring the place into compliance um, the community board denied this application um, mostly because we were operating out of compliance at the time before we knew. Um, they've since changed their method of operation to ensure that they are compliant. 
until this paperwork gets approved. They did receive a violation for not operating in the appropriate way. Uh, since then, as it's been brought to our attention, there are signs posted, seats are removed from that bar, and it's operating as a proper service bar. So the application before you um, is sort of to clean things up and bring things into compliance here. And I know that's confusing, so happy to answer any questions that you might have. So the customer, but, but right now it sounds like this place is operating as two separate places. Well, it's one place, but they're sort of branded differently with one being the cocktail lounge component and one being the proper sit-down restaurant. Is, is there one door? There, you enter through the restaurant and you can get in there. There is a separate door also for the downstairs, but the places are connected and people do go through the restaurant into the lower level. So it is the same premise. You just name the bar whatever you name Correct, it. Correct, as, as people do. But again, this would be very straightforward if the alteration we had to do was to add the lower level, which is what we thought. Right. It turns out it was already on the license, so that lower level was already part of this premise. Um, and we had to basically file this paperwork to turn the service bar into a stand-up bar on the top level and to make sure that everything is compliant. So how does the trade name PG's play into all of this? So when you first applied, there was no PG's? Correct. Correct. PG's was a trade name that we added because that is the name of the lower level bar area. So you basically started at a whole different bar, and now you're coming back to operate places, places under one license. Well, not necessarily. We, we didn't have Department of Buildings approval to do anything on the lower, lower level. Um, we always wanted to do that, but we didn't have it at the outset. So we went to add that later, and we found that it was actually already part of this. Um, yeah, but that's but you, just, you're lucky. Well, or not, actually, because I, I think if it was done the right way, we would have had you a much have, easier time. You would have applied for a, a second license for PG's? No, it's all connected, so we can't apply for a second one. But if, it, if everything was in order, we would have either gone to the community board and said, hey, we'd like to add this space, which is what we thought we were doing, or at the very beginning, we would have said we'd like to license the whole place and they'll be branded slightly differently. If they're connected, you can't get two licenses. You can't get two licenses, but it's, you know, there's still a food menu down there, there's still seating down there, it's still the same place. Um, it's just sort of branded a little bit differently as some places do. And it's, a, it's been a good operator in the neighborhood, lots of community support, um, despite the fact we didn't have the community board support per se, we did have a split vote at the subcommittee meeting. Um, no violations of any kind other than um, the ones with respect to the not conforming that, that you just heard a couple of weeks well, ago. I see here that the community board was aware that the downstairs was licensed, so it sounds like it was just confusion about which bars were stand-up bars and which ones were customer bars, but they indicate that you would that, and not you, but whoever was representing them at the time indicated that the downstairs would only be used for private parties, but I don't, I see the stipulations that were entered into, and I don't see that in the stipulations. Yeah, I don't, things that predated me, I've had a hard time getting a hold of, um, but again, we went back oh, to the, Didn't you, your firm represent them? Not at the outset. We represented them on the upgrade from beer and wine to full liquor. Talking which about the original documents in the uh, restaurant wine. Correct. We, we, up, we started representing them with the upgrade from restaurant wine to full liquor about a At year ago. At that time, it was reported to us they were using the ground floor. Um, oh, that's where the alcohol stored. And the refrigerator in the basement. These are older forms. But they were licensing two floors. Yeah, it's obvious that they got both floors licensed. It was, it was a bit frustrating because at the community board level, it, it seemed like we were just talking about the same thing and they were unhappy that we were operating out of compliance. We didn't know we were. When it came to our attention, they've taken steps to remedy that. Obviously, we paid the fine last time. And um, we're not trying to change anything else about the method of operation. The hours are the same. The food's the same. Do we have any complaints about this place? So what also, are the hours here? Closing at 1 a.m., seven days. And it's also worth noting that um, Eddie, who's here today, lives in Chinatown in the neighborhood. His business partner, his family came to this country and has been in Chinatown for 60 years, more or less. He's been here for 40. Um, 
So they're, they're in touch with the neighborhood, they live in the community, and the place has by and large been a, a great asset to the community. They keep the streets clean, um, and they, they operate in a way that doesn't disrupt any of the, the neighbors. Just a $3,000 uh, CNC, but I have nothing else. Which is from this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Essentially. And the stipulations you are all? We're still good with all of them. But I mean, you're you're not getting complaints from the community board that you're not abiding by them. No, the only the only issue that came up was this one with the non-compliance, and we self-reported that. I don't know that if we didn't self-report that, uh, it would have ever been an issue. And we only self-reported it because we're put in this interesting situation where we're trying to add a different component that was already part of the license premise. So it's just really cleaning up the paperwork. Um, okay. Are you, uh, are you, any questions? Tom? I think we're ready. It's like a catch-22 here, because they're opposing because you're in violation, and just so I'm going to vote to approve just so that you get cleaned up and hopefully you start on the right foot. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to vote to approve as well, I think. That there was a mistake here. I don't know who made it, whether it was us or you, not you, but you're the, uh, the former attorney and the community board must have missed it. But it's obvious this whole place was licensed and it's just a matter of where the customer bars are. So I'll vote to approve. Thank All the so same much. stipulations are in effect. Thank you. Good luck. Next time is 2469, Chow Hong, Inc. Good afternoon for the licensee, Marcotti and Associates by William See, that's Joseph. What, I don't get about like, what was supposed to be shut that guy down? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. One more reason to be mad at us. This has a history, right? We just we charged them. Are they planning on paying the uh, twenty grand by? I believe it's due to December 7th, which yeah. is Friday, and uh, it's my understanding they are going to pay. So what are they doing here? Because this is going to be the – they come back in here in front of me. Do we have anything else? I believe they have I just need something. We it, Right now, if we had something we could prove, they'd be done. I believe they, too, scheduled for hearing on December 27th. It's a lot of bad history. I understand, as Mr. Donahue had indicated, there is a current fine of $20,000 that is outstanding and doable. Pending sale to minors. I would accept this fine and you know, handle yeah. those when they call. All right. I'll, I'll accept. Thank I'll you. Accept. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next item is 2445, New York Romantics, Romanticos, Inc. Uh, again, for the licensee, uh, Marcotti and Associates by William Joseph. Hmm. Sustain everything except 5 and 11. Withdraw both those charges. Correct. Uh, most of the charges uh, were relative to uh, the manager and administrative issues. Um, all the building code violations regarding the fire extinguishers and the education of the manager allowing access to records have been remedied. So my problem with this is the guys have been open since February, and somebody has to go in there in May for this kind of stuff? I and mean, we don't end up going into places unless we get complaints. So they were open three months. Uh, I, th I had thought it was a March operation. I didn't know if it was a specific Well, the, they, the, the same thing. The PD doesn't come in unless they're getting complaints. So I, I mean, half of me wants to shut them down because this is just stupid, and it's in a street that I hear about constantly. Roosevelt Avenue. Go ahead, Commissioner Fan. You can pick this one. Uh, Premixing, purchase from an authorized source, failure to supervise. I'm at ten thousand. That's right. We're in ten thousand. Okay. Thank you. Next item: twenty-four sixty-two. Lost Trace Loris Lorellis Corp. For the licensee, Mark Cody and Associates by William Joseph. This is also a CNC for $1,500. 
I'm going to counter it 3,000. 3,000. Okay. You accept or do you want to wait till the, yeah, they'll okay. accept. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. You Appreciate too. your time. 2431, Healthy Organic Foods and Deli, Inc. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Ben Sharav appearing again for the uh, applicant. They're just asking for an adjournment to the next date. He was unable to be here. I just. 1219, then. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I, hold on for a second. 2402, Tracy Bly Blaze. Good afternoon, Terrence Flynn on behalf of the licensee. This is an offer of compromise to resolve the charges. Um, I will say there are a series of applications that have been filed to address these very issues um, involving both the alteration. Oh, in the backyard. And yep, yes, which had previously been approved by the community board, but then the community board is having second thoughts with regard to the backyard area. It's not in use currently. What neighborhood in Brooklyn is this? Uh, it's not way out, is it? Excuse me? Is it way out in Brooklyn? What neighborhood no, is it? No, it's by, it's by um, excuse me, uh, Bay Ridge. Oh. Yeah, it's right in the Bay Ridge area. All right, I'll accept. I'll accept. Thank you. 2423, White Diamond Restaurant Corp. This is also an offer of compromise to resolve the charges in that manner. I'll accept. I'll accept. 2454, Butterfield 8, WP, LLC. This is also a offer of compromise to resolve the charges. This is the Brother Jimmy's? Yes, this is a trade name Brother Jimmy's, correct. They used to play for their softball team. Accept. I'll accept. Back when there was only one Brother Jimmy's. <laughs> Hearing from Mr. Palillo yes. on 2375, Gato Verde Sports Bar Corp. Finally. I believe this is an application before you because there was opposition, but since that time, Mr. Palillo had an opportunity to meet with the community board, and now the community board is not opposed, I'm being told. That's the information I have as well. Worked his magic, so I will approve. I will approve as well. Thank you very much. Have a very nice day, nice see weekend, you. and uh, you we'll see you on the 19th. Yeah, you feeling yeah, better, cold. Terry? Yeah. yeah. I wish it was a night out, but no, it's cold. 2391, El Cerrito Del Carmen Restaurant, Inc. Timothy Alnick for the licensee. This is a default, which I noticed on the calendar. <laughs> I only laugh because you get more defaults than anyone. It's true. I called them up. I, it's not in my file. Um, well, no, they don't go text, to you, so I get so that. I'm they, just, they, your clients seem to not get sky, delivered yeah. anymore. I mean, the write-up so says it was mailed. One charge. It Except, probably makes more sense. I can tell you some substantive information. I did the hearing yesterday at ECB, and so that's still pending. Uh, frankly, I think it might get dismissed. The officer did not remember where they did the reading where the apartment was located. And the maximum that's reported here is 8,000. That's the default penalty. The maximum of the hearing is 3,200. So, yeah, but this uh, one was delivered is my problem. No, I, um, yeah, I understand. Um, that's what and it was about. delivered during business hours, 6.33 PM. So but I would just give a modest penalty. Yeah. I'm at 2,000. 1,500? Can you live with fifteen hundred? Fine. Thank you. I don't have anything else signed in. Or well, that okay. All right, we ready to move forward? Sure. Twenty-three eighty-two. Sustain one and two. Dismiss three and four. Withdraw five, six, and seven. 
4,000. 4,000. 2384, 85, 86, 87, 88. I'll just counter 20,000. I was countering a cancel and bond, so I'll, I'll, I'll take your 20. Counter a 20. 2392. Um, did, there, did we approve the conditional? Corporate change? Yes. 2,500. 2,500. 2,393. Oh, is it 500? 500. 2,396. 9,000. Nine, yeah, 9,000. He wanted mitigation, but there was no. 2,397. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. 2398. I met. Cancel and bond. The place is shut, right? Cancel and bond. 2399, 2400, and 2401. Accept. Accept. 2404-0506. Accept. Accept. Cancel and bond. 2407. Accept. Accept. 2408. Accept. Accept. 2411. Accept. 6,000. Accept. 2412. Accept. 6,500. Accept. 2413. Oh. You want me to do this? Uh, I think this is low. Yeah. Um, I'd probably double it. Yeah. I know that the licensee was very cooperative with our investigators, but we're talking about a significant amount of cases of alcohol that were delivered to other liquor stores and ended up in this guy's store. Um, at least 30, 32 cases that we found. So I'm going to, uh, what would you say, Chris? You think we should double it? Yeah. So I'll counter at 30,000. Counter at 30,000. 2415. I'm at 3,000. Counter at 3,000. <clears> 2416, 17, 18. I'm at cancel. I sustain would. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dismiss 6, sustain 7 and 8, sustain 1 through 3, and sustain 1 through 3. I would actually uh, suggest provoking. Considering how bad this is, okay. we have half the police department at the. All right, revoke and bond. Revoke and bond. Twenty-four nineteen. Sustain one. Two fifty. Two fifty. Twenty-four twenty and twenty-four thirty-five. No, and so twenty-four. Twenty-four. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh. Just, just well, you skipped one then. You skipped 24, 25, and 26. No, no, I didn't. Trust me, it's 24, 20, and 24, 35. Okay, that's the next one. Uh, dismiss one and two, dismiss one, two, and three. Dismiss the case. Dismiss this. 24, 24, 24, 25, 24, 26. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. Oh, this is 2433. I was countering a 10,000. Are we talking about 514 bottles here of untaxed liquor? What do you do? Go to Canada? Not bottles, liters. Liters. It, I mean, it could have been 1.5, sir. Sure. Yeah. That's... So 514, which is. No, oh, no, so I'm countering. 30,000. 30,000. What is it? What do we uh, think he did? Went to you, Canada you, and smuggled you, it in? Yeah, it looks pretty. Or someplace else. You're countering at 30,000? Okay. Yeah, he's yes. got. Am I reading the number wrong? There was 514 no, liters. Just that the uh, maximum penalty is. Yeah, per charge. So it can only be up to 10. Well, then we cancel. Or he takes 30. How do we do that? 
Well, I mean, if he Ooh. agrees to it. Right, that's one thing. So you want to say go with 30? Okay. Yeah, ask for 30 if I think the alternative. I mean, this is cases of, of he's smuggling this into the country, he must be. Because I don't know that there's, there's not duty free up there, is there? I doubt it. In Utica? No. I would, see, this is why we need Ford here today. Mm. Yeah, Commissioner counter at 30. Do you agree with that, Commissioner Fan? Counter at 30. Okay. 24, 34. Except. Except 5,000. 24, 36. Stain, uh, 1, 6,000. 6,000? 24, 37. Ex except revoke and bond. That's a new one. Yep. Revoke and bond. 24, 38. Except. Except 6,000. This is surrendered. Hmm? Yeah, if they don't pay Still it, take the 6,000. Okay. 2439. Sept. Sept. 2440. Sept. 6,000 and <coughs> 2441. Except. 6,500 and sept. 2442. Sept. 2,500 and sept. 2443. Except. Except. 2444. Sustain one and two. 5,000. 5,000. 2446. Except. 6,000 accept. 2447. Except. 6,500 accept. 2448. Cancel for the record. Cancel for the record. 2449. Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. 2450. Revoke for the record. Revoke for the record. 2451. 1,000. 1,000. 2452. Accept. Letter of warning, accept. 2453. Accept. 4,500, accept. 2455. I'm going to counter at 6,000. Counter at 6,000. 2456, and they did pay that $1,500 fine that was floating around. Except 2500 a cent. 2457 and 2458. Except 2000 a cent. 2461. Cancel, Cancel and bond. Cancel and bond. All right, the next one 2463, 65, and 66 being held over at the request of the attorney until 1219. Who is the attorney? Um, his name is in there. Oh, it's Howard Levine. He uh, he had a court appearance today. Uh, today so okay. 2464. Except. 6,500. It's three, though. A counter at 10,000. But it's similar oh. dates. I think that's why she did that. Oh, I see. I see. Similar dates. Same, same day. Yeah, because the term is mentioned before that if it's at the same operation, sometimes do once a lower fine. Fine. Yeah. If you want to counter, you can. I, don't I mean, you can. Hey, that, I'm just it's okay. It sounds like three so, of them walked in together. That's are we okay. good with that? All right. Yes. Twenty-four sixty-eight. Um, Mr. Flynn contacted me. The community Is Mr. Board Flynn here? He was here. He left. He wants an adjourn. They're meeting tonight on this. So they will have something hopefully by the 19th. Who's meeting tonight? The community board. No, this is NIAC. This is NIAC. Oh, no, no, this is, this is, this is whatever documents he needs, he, he's meeting, there's some Something meeting tonight where he's trying like, to get the yeah. documents. Oh, all right. And so maybe it's with the, with the, uh, the city, the police, or so whatever. So 12 19? Yeah. yeah. And that's all I had. You have anything else, Chairman? No. All right. Then we are adjourned. Thank you.